Okay, everybody, it is wonderful to have you all here for our first session. Um, I decided to call um, this campaign uh, incur The Incursion. Because that is what you guys will be dealing with for the most part. Oh, Alright. Definitely not spoilers, right? Well, you kind of know the, the deal that that'll be a thing. Dealing with um, the and then the racial slurs. Mm hmm. <laughs> incursions and racial slurs. That's what I'm all about. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, sorry. I've, I've, I've started recording, by the way, so. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's, that's what it fault. is. You speak that, well, that is your own fault. That is true. That is, um. So sad. Oh, you gonna you gonna change your freaking picture at the bottom, dude? What what the hell? I screamed I did. Yeah, you know he did. Oh. It's just he might have oh, to update. I, I have to I have to refresh. I'm so sorry. Yeah, he's looking fast. Oh, you're good. Dude. For dark shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm up here. All right. Yeah, are you gonna set the scene for us? What, what, yeah. What's so happening? hold on. I'm just making sure. Before we I do that, I want to make sure all of your characters are on every map, and ready to be. Uh, so when when we jump later, I won't have to do any editing with dynamic lighting and shit. Gotcha. Oh, I fucking went for it this time, fellas. Fuck with that. That's great. That's some good stuff. So we're not going to be using a grid for the most part. A couple of these maps have grids on them, so you can like try and stay within the squares if you can um i know coloring in the lines was a difficult process for many of you yeah tell me call about me, it man call me because i hate the crayons yeah <laughs> exactly okay tokens Wait, speaking of tokens, I like your uh, character model, Paul. Um, real quick, fellas, can everybody let me know whether or not they have dark vision? Yes. I'm no. human, so I don't think I do. I mm. do. I do indeed have dark vision. Yeah, humans don't I have do. dark vision, right? No. No, humans do not have dark vision. Paul, is it 60 well, feet? Do you have dark vision, man? Um... No, I do not know Mine is what the specification is. Let me see. I, I'm pretty sure that's that's the standard dark vision. Right. I'm sure it is standard. Because I don't remember anything other than that. But I am double checking for you. Vic, do you have dark vision? I do not, unfortunately. Boy. So what cave? What cave are we going Tommy, into? Tommy, you said you do have dark vision. Yes, I do. I figured a little raccoon has dark vision. Have you guys what, seen what like no dark vision looks like with dynamic lighting? It's horror. It's terrifying. It, yeah, it's fucking yeah. horrendous, dude. Mm -hmm. I do have dark vision, okay, and it's, it does not specify what. All right. Well, then I'm gonna say it's 60 feet, which is really far. Yeah. Like in my the campaign I was doing with the other guys, like oh my god, they can see basically everything. Where I'm stuck, it, it's it, only if I have a torch, mind you, can I see like a quarter of their vision. Yeah, it's gonna be us again. So. <laughs> if you ain't from Michigan, have you never done this before? <laughs> That's what we call gator hunting. <laughs> That's what we call gator hunting. In Michigan? What do you mean? You brought them up here? Them late gators? <laughs> them um, late gators? Reggie, Reggie doesn't have dark vision. That's fine, because no. you do, and that's the important part. Reggie doesn't isn't even going to have, like, vision on his token. He's just going to be able to move where you can see, and where you can have him be. Okay. For the most part. I mean, unless you're planning on sending him out of your sight a bit, then we can change that. But it shouldn't be a problem. Not right now, no. Can you see through his eyes? Is that an ability you have? Uh, I think so. Okay. Well, I then. I think later. 
It's okay. Say it's a later ability. Is Reggie gotcha. a human form? No. Reggie's a primate. His what? Reggie is my main key, dude. His, his mom key, oh, dude. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 you're a pet. Yeah, he's a Pokemon trainer. Also, I mean, obviously you guys can have flashlights and shit if you want. Um, that would all be within the parameters for standard equipment, uh, standard issue equipment from the organization. I'm sorry, what did you say was also a part of it? A flashlight. Okay. It Wait. wasn't a health potion? You didn't just say health potion right then? We did earlier. Yeah. I, I did earlier. Like, I'm considering giving you guys health potions. Ah, okay. I, I think that like, consideration is valid. Are you going to call it like adrenaline shots or something? No, it'll just be a health potion. Okay. It'll be a potion of a potion of healing. I know it's crazy. That is crazy. Potion of healing. Let's. Are you sure it's not like a morphine shot? Like that would be dope. It's actually just a fucking. You can have morphine shots, so they're gonna be temp HP, not oh, real oh HP. God. I see a square okay. of myself. Yeah. Do you guys are you guys on some stairs? I mm -hmm. see just my token. That's it. Same, yes. Much. I am editing. Is it oh, because that's I because don't have dark it's because you don't have dark vision. Uh, okay. I can actually, I can put a light in there. Hey, no, I got a little square. No, 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 you guys would be able to see within that area. Okay. Okay. Back to my character sheet. <laughs> guys, it's really dark in here. Where are you? Who the fuck said that? <laughs> Where am I? Every time someone turns out a light. <laughs> Every time I turn out the light, I hear, hey guys, it's dark in here. You guys see? Oh, no. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, I put a little torch on the wall here. Aww. Um, okay. So. I guess with Nick's uh, recording, I'll do a little bit of a intro into the world. And then we'll have each of you guys introduce your characters to each other. Um, but to start, we are on Earth. Uh, <clears throat> currently at an undisclosed location. Um, we all did a little bit of figuring out how each of you have arrived where you are. Um, one of your... You have been told there is a sixth party member who... Uh, has not been able to make it as he had some obligations back at his home for a little while um but he's being prepped and kept in the loop as far as what you all are doing um but we uh so here <laughs> earth uh is not the earth that we all currently know and are you know typically aware of uh this version of earth has uh you know living legitimate uh i've you know been using the term cryptids often um the other in, but others in the in the world might refer to them simply as monsters or uh creatures from other places um it is the year 1990 currently so we are uh starting in a place where the internet doesn't quite exist it's kind of in its baby stages uh you guys might have like car phones or brick cell phones or you know pretty bad cell phones but you know cell phones the internet is not something that's widely had and is accessible now you guys might be able to access it for research purposes but you know you don't have smartphones you don't have um google in your pocket you can't google how to kill our enemies uh yeah pretty much google doesn't exist yet i don't think that's my whole plan <laughs> um but where we are starting is not what you guys can see currently uh as i just didn't want to have you all sitting in a completely black screen but you are all uh as you've been walked through the office building 
uh, that is the organization. They've explained to you it is their job to deal with uh, creatures from other places, other realms that intend to do harm or may have mistakenly found themselves here on Earth where they don't belong and they're going to cause problems. It is your job to deal with this. Be kind of think Men in Black or Hellboy. Um, you guys are not, the organization has told you, none, you are not associated with any government as there are different divisions of the organization all over the world. Um, you are, have now just, through obviously through all your different means, um, been recruited, strong-armed, given your last chance to stay in this realm. Uh, many different uh, reasons for you all to be in this room, but you guys find yourselves in a boardroom. Um, it, it is, it, but there's no furniture except for six shitty cots in what looks like an old, ab nearly abandoned uh, office boardroom. Um, you all have just arrived to see a motley crew around you. Um, we'll start just from the I am uh, Skinner, by the way. Uh, I'll be Dungeon Master. Um, and we're going to start with Dr. Fuse on the left. Uh, can you please give us a description of your character as well as if you would like a brief description as to how and why you got here. So, as you guys are kind of looking around this room, you see this little raccoon in a lab coat and it looks like he has like scrubs but they seem kind of armored as well um and he's just kind of sitting there kind of like playing with this little like bobble um you guys know like those um like expandy things like expand like balls that like expand with like yeah the toy balls. ones yeah yeah, yeah. He, he looks like ha he looks like he has one of those um nice. and he's kind of like playing with it um he goes well um hello my name's dr fuse i've been here uh for quite some time actually um you know i was kind of kept here as they were kind of figuring out what to do with me and since i showed some incredible intelligence i've uh you know found my way here uh helping take care of these otherworldly threats monsters and such um just trying to research them yeah see what see what they're capable of uh domesticated type stuff <clears throat> yeah all right Dave. um who is next <clears throat> i don't know um, well, let's just go down the line uh that's fair alexander oh. e not the name <laughs> of your character <laughs> Real quick, do we see Dr. Fuse in this human form or as his actual... He is not in it. No, you guys see a raccoon. You've all been inundated with the organization enough to see through the veil at this point. Okay. The veil being what keeps normal humans from seeing what they would think of as monsters that walk down the street every day. But, you know, they're just an ogre trying to go to his job as a, to you know, a bridge toll collector. Okay. I do, troll. Uh, I do want to point out that considering my uh, I'll, it'll be explained in a second but my character's definitely me has like an eye on uh, Dr. Fuse and like hmm mm -hmm. like you're trying to eat him or like uh, <laughs> no no I'm more <laughs> suspicious of him ah okay okay it's a good question you gotta know those things <laughs> yeah Marcus <laughs> yeah uh, so you guys in sort of like the front or most front corner of the room, um, you know, in front of the raccoon who just introduced himself, you see a, a relatively slim but tall man, uh, really greasy hair, looks kind of more rough for wear, but uh, he seems to be snacking on a big, big piece of beef jerky, a nice Slim Jim. Uh, 
doesn't really seem too phased and in, in fact if you looked close enough you'd see probably you know a more reddish eye color kind of puffy one would say he looks a little bit uh in the clouds um, but definitely snacking and just sort of absolutely fascinated with the fact that there's a talking raccoon in front of him uh, and then he sort of stumbles as he realizes it's his turn to introduce uh Whoa, man, that's awfully, that's awfully amazing. You can talk like that, or just like all the yeah. time, man. Yeah, all the time, you know. And and you guys can see this guy. You're like, he's not just in my head, man. No, 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 I'm here. I kind of like reach out to like touch him a little. <laughs> Whoa, man, I can feel your energy. <laughs> well. My name's Marcus, and, uh, well, I, I kind of fancy these new rooms we've got here and this new setup. I'm uh, pretty akin to sleeping in the streets and under the bridges nearby. Hmm. Well. Yeah, find some nice accommodations here. Yeah. I hope you guys don't mind the smell of marijuana. <laughs> Not so long as you pass it over my way. That's what I'm talking about, man. Kind of take two steps over towards uh, whoever said that. Bert. Yeah. That's about Bert. I can Bert. Have to see that I'm working with professionals here. <laughs> yeah. Everyone has their ways to cope with things. You know, it's not a dangerous substance. <laughs> I'm glad I'm, I'm by a bunch of like minded individuals. Then. I just continue to like, snack on the beef jerky in my hands. As I seem like kind of just relatively unfazed by where we are and what we're doing at all. Just kind of not really paying attention to any dangers in the area or anything. All right, Vernon. All right, well, if you look on the wall, kind of near uh, the back of the room, you'll see an edgy looking individual kind of overdressed for compared to everyone else here. You know, he looks like he went to maybe like a spirit Halloween after like, you know, uh, like a Hollywood cowboy movie came out and like bought all the all this gear from there. Um, but he's leaned up against the wall, kind of realizing that the doctor is not the only odd creature here that he is seeing. He uh, tips his head up and introduces himself like, hello, the name is Vernon Seal. I am here for my mission, my mission alone. I hope, and he eyes, you know, the weed smokers over there. I hope we can work together quite well. Uh, whatever you say, man, I, I'm here to just keep you guys alive. And, uh, I sort of gesture to the sword and shield that I have sort of brandished on my back. And uh, I extend an unopened Slim Jim to you <laughs> I... that I just sort of have crimpled up in my pocket. Uh, it it kind of smells a little dank, like maybe there's other things stuffed in the same pocket, kind of just together. <laughs> I, uh, I, I graciously refuse your offer, sir. Well, that's a shame. Uh, I'll take our... it. Oh, oh, wonderful. <laughs> I, I didn't know you could eat the human. I mean, mm, here you go. I can rummage through enough <laughs> stuff to where I can eat. <clears throat> that makes sense. I would be, be against feeding rodents, but if it speaks... I am not a rodent. My apologies. Yes, yes. And what are you, as the other gentleman asks, what, what exactly are you? Well, as you can see, I am a bipedal raccoon guy uh the race is officially called a tanukin um and uh you know we've uh developed a sort of sentience in this world and a lot of the raccoons that you see out there are mm, about 25 percent are, are actually us um we keep hidden through the veil but we still like food ah that explains why raccoons wash their food yes yeah yeah that's why we can clean up after you, you dirty, you dirty individuals too. <clears throat> oh man, it's all making sense now, man. All right, 
Uh, we'll move on to Bert. <laughs> oh. Just okay. A, yeah, just a quick introduction, description of what you look like, and uh, yeah. Yes. Um. Well, as you can see, I am uh, Bert the Satered Bard. Um. I'm dressed in a uh, slightly uh, studded leather that might have seen better days. Um, uh, I'm sitting in one of the cots playing uh, my lute kind of faintly, um, just practicing uh, some songs that I used to sing. Um, uh, and yeah. That's good, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's at about this time you see Marcus sort of wander on over to you and uh hands sticks out a uh stick of beef jerky to you and just says, Hey man, my name's Marcus. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Marcus. Is this for me? Yeah, yeah, I I suggest you take it, man. Ah, thank you. And uh, if you grab the beef jerky, uh, you'll notice that there's like a like a joint kind of stuck to it that I'm I'm intending to like slide a hand give to you. Oh uh, roll! I... I, hey man, this is gonna be the first roll of the campaign. Oh Let's get a man! Slide a hand. Check. Slide a hand. I love it. Uh, I'm going to even... roll perception as well, because. <laughs> uh, nah, man, you're not. I guess you said you were actively watching. I'll give you. I'll let you roll. Okay. So I think I forgot to say this earlier, but I'm a paladin. I'm going to be playing our our new uh, book. Oh yeah, the we'll Oath of the Harvest it. Paladin. Yeah, oh. content from Heliana's Guide to Monster Hunting. Yeah, I'm super excited uh, to be playing this absolute stoner paladin character where I'll be buffing you all with my snacks. I, I definitely saw it. <laughs> that macro well, you know, looks no, he could crazy. That's a 19. Yeah, that's um, the macros are weird with this character sheet that I picked. Mm -hmm. oh, that wasn't uh, even a macro. Oh that yeah, like it's just a character, character sheet. sheet. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's what I mean. I see. <laughs> uh, that's a three. I'm not <laughs> sly at all. You drop it, dude. You drop that shit <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> oh fuck. Ooh. Uh, mm. uh, here you go, man. I just sort of oh, just thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll bend down and pick it up, and. Uh... You know what? I'll light it up. I'll put it in my mouth and use press the oh. facial. <laughs> I kind of lean into you and whisper really loudly so kind of anybody could hear. I just say, man, they really don't like it when, when you smoke those in here. I've tried. <laughs> well, I don't even know who they are, so they probably don't know who I am. Uh, you know, you know the, he's probably talking about the people who work at the organization who brought you in here. Oh. Well, I passed a drug test, so they can fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care. They actually, you actually would know, well, I don't know that you would know, but Dr. Mm. Fuse would definitely know, Ryudo, who we're about to meet, would definitely know. You guys are in your room right now. These are your digs. Pretty much whatever you want to do in here, you can do. You guys are not, again, this undisclosed location is, you all, I guess some of you got here through normal means, but you would know that you guys are not in on the normal earth right now. You guys are in like a pocket plane where the organization does all of its business. Ooh. Um, and your rooms are kind of their own sectioned off areas within these po this big pocket plane. What is the legality of cannabis in this pocket plane? <laughs> there is no laws in your room unless you guys make laws here. Episode uh, one: The trials and tribulations of cannabis. <laughs> yeah, because uh, we're actually just this is just a role play of legalizing cannabis. Right. <laughs> da, 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 da. Well, this. Thank you, Mark. This smells like some good, uh, good berries. This is very delicious. Oh yeah, Bert. You would definitely say like for Earth, it's you know pretty good compared to the Feywild shit that you're used to. This <laughs> is like. Walking out, this is like literally smoking oregano compared to that. <laughs> I gotta say, guys, for the way this is going, my first fucking advertiser is gonna be a dispensary. That's great. <laughs> there you go. I love that. Whatever you want to do, coach. <laughs> uh, uh, 
And then I let's, lean in uh, a little harder and I just say, man, I only got the good stuff, you know? <laughs> I only buy the best premium grade. With my perception the... check, can I, can I tell that this, that shit is bad? Like, it's just awful? No, no, no. It's, it's good, you, it's good it in your pretty good. Oh, okay. It's pretty good to your stance. It's only different because he's from the Feywild. Oh. Yeah. Shit's yeah, we... wild there. It's called the Feywild for a reason. <laughs> yeah, we we got Delta 82 over here. Like, Delta 82. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and let's uh let's get to our second edgy character and the last one that we will be introducing today. Yes. Uh, before is it? Are we inside of our rooms here? Then yeah. you guys are like. You guys have all just been like slowly collected. Um, oh God, I believe it was Jacques and man, I don't remember the other guy's name. The two oh, guys, uh, no, the, fr- I the big. Do you remember him? Um. Okay, I got a name for it somewhere. Let me let me see what I got. I don't remember. It was so long ago. I wrote it down in an old notebook. I don't. Yeah. yeah. I did two and I have the notebook right in front of me. I know one was Jean Claude, right? Something Jean like Claude, that. yes. That was the, the big quiet guy was Jean Claude. And then Tyson was the other one. Tyson, yep. Yep, there you go. Or Jean yes, yeah. Alright. Jean Claude and Tyson. Yep. Um so you guys have all been brought in by Jean Claude and Tyson. I'll just do I guess Ryudo, I'll let you finish your intro and then I can give everybody sort of a a peek behind the curtain as to how each of your characters got here. Yeah. And maybe refresh you guys too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um when you guys look over you see Ryudo, uh, who is indeed an edgy hobgoblin character. He's definitely has goblinoid markings branded all around his shoulders and stuff. You would know around his bed he has like a lot of incenses and stuff. Um, he's definitely a little bit irritated with the music going on, and you can see that he's like passively, but you know, not even passively, he's actively trying to block out his irritation from uh, music because it's really not his thing. You can see he has a bunch of books in front of him that he's closing up, and and he's got all of his equipment that he's ready to start putting on him before he starts to head out. But yeah, he's a little hobgoblin. He doesn't like talking much, but but he's here. And he's here to hunt some monsters. Um, I blow this Goodberry uh, cannabis cigarette directly at you and say, uh, hey, do you want to hit of this, Ryudo? This is good shit. Oh, God. Mm. You see that for a moment, Ryudo considers it, but then he sees that it's Bert. And, uh... <laughs> So he grabs some sage from his pocket and then lights some sage and then just puts it right in between him and the, him and the joint. So he's just like cleansing the area around it. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, more for Bert, I guess. Yeah, leave it that way. I don't want it. Like if we got basically Bert and Ernie over here. <laughs> it is, uh, there's a real herbal scent going on in this room. There is no ventilation whatsoever. <laughs> and it's all fucking wood, so it just soaks right in. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> um, yeah, but that is uh, great. Good to hear. Just as a bit of a peek behind the curtain on each of you. Um, I don't know. Do you guys want to reveal a little bit of your backstory about how and why you are here? Uh, no. Or do you want me to kind of go through it? Or do you just want to leave it and we'll get moving? I mean, I, I wasn't going to tell little... anyone about what... Other than how I got here, I wasn't. Yeah, I, kind of I wasn't gonna give give out anything that you didn't want yeah. to be given out. Yeah, and then I, I guess mean, I want to really go. Everyone kind of knows how I've gotten here. I've been here. So yeah. Who wants to go right. first? Do you want to go like, yeah, as I've we were, here. or? Well, uh, up to you. I mean, Doctor Fuse said he was uh, gonna keep his cards to his chest. Marcus, I mean, do you want to? Yeah, I. Uh... In or out of character up to you kind of give a bit about how marcus got here and why what he's doing what his deal is i'll do this out of character for a moment i suppose marcus uh like i kind of said before has lived on the streets for uh at least a good long while now and he was uh kind of friends if you'll if you'll call it that uh friends with our hobgoblin friend in the corner of the room um and rather he all right that's still the plan right 
That's up to you two. I don't know yeah. if you like. You well, may know each other. You may not be as close because Ryoto's a bit of an edgy edge lord. But you might know him. It's up to you guys if you want to decide that or not. Um, I definitely wasn't gonna have myself around much of normal society world for very okay. much of my backstory. Yeah, That's no worries. Right. I mean, I think I guess Alex, we can uh re kind of do a little um, what's it called? Retcon. Um, retcon. Yeah, you uh. Definitely uh, saw, maybe it wasn't your friend Pierre getting abducted, um, but it was something, and uh, you got involved, because you can and always have been able to see through the veil. The veil being the mystical barrier that keeps, I think I mentioned it already, keeps uh, people and monsters, or people from seeing the monsters that live with them every day. Um, and uh, you have always been able to see through it, and likely what happened is you saw someone who was in trouble, you got involved, and because they saw that you knew what was going on, they said that you were not to just be left to your own devices anymore. Yeah, and I I convey that to the party. I sort of let you all know that hey, these creatures that are breaking the barrier between our worlds, I, I can see them. I can see them all the time. I don't need any tools or special equipment and machines. I've always been able to see them. Do you think you're special, Marcus? I think I'm fucked up. You know, you can see the same things that we're all seeing right now. And we've, we've all come here, and they've given that sort of thing to all of us. Well, but that's not what uh, I mean. I was going to say, Ryudo, uh, Bert, and Dr. Fuse, you guys were born in within the Vale. You guys are not normal humans like Vernon and Marcus. Um, you would def you've always been able to see through the Vale. You were born, <laughs> you were right. born in it. Um, molded yeah. by it, if you will. Uh, so yeah, that is definitely a something you, you might you might think there, Ryudo. I don't know if you knew that, but. Yeah, sorry I don't, to interrupt. I don't know if you would know about it. No, sorry. Yeah, people uh, people from my world, you know, uh, they don't really believe in you guys. And to be frank, they'd rather not believe in you guys. And, well, I mean, that's probably what I imagine we're doing here. Yeah. Trying to keep that that line between our worlds separate. Right, it is better that way. Um, I suppose some... I'll go next if you're done, Marcus. Go for it. Okay. Um, I'm not probably. I'm gonna explain kind of what my story is, but I'm not gonna relay as much to everyone here. Probably. Um, my story is when I was young. I. Uh, have you ever seen the um, Abe Lincoln versus Vampires movie? Great film. Mm -hmm. would, would recommend. The scene kind of where uh, he sees Abe sees his mother get, like get killed by like the vampire or whatnot. Uh, I kind of went through something similar, where through the the crack of a of a door, I saw my mother being torn to shreds by a creature that I could not explain, and as to how I was able to see it, I do not know. As being told of what the veil is now, I understand that I should not have been able to see it. But it was, you know, bloody mess. The creature was, it was not human, I could tell. And it wasn't as if it was a vampire, but it was feasting on, the, on the, you know, the corpse of my mother. And I was, you know, afraid, terrified, and ran away, you know, to seclude myself in my room. And when morning came, I found, you know, the remains of my mother. However, I also found my sister missing. But there was no you know, corpse or remains or any sign. Nothing to say that my sister was dead and nothing to say that she ran away on her own. So my mission, as I learned to become an expert tracker and s search to find, based off the tracks of in the blood that I saw at my home, to find this creature and hopefully lead me to my sister and avenge my mother. And as, yeah, as I would, I would probably relay that I was, I would be on a search 
you know, for my sister and to kill a creature. That's deep, man. Um, I don't know how much you want to talk about, Paul, but you feel an eerie similarity in that story. Not just, like, because what he said, but you get some, like, roll a wisdom check with advantage because of your blood hunter abilities. Um, just wisdom? Yeah, just straight wisdom. Right. Wait a second. Okay, that's 17. 17? Um, yeah, that so like, you get a, your, your spider sense goes off a little bit. That sounds way too similar to other stories wow. you have heard. Right. Um, but I'll leave it at that. For sure. We can go to Bert. Bert, how did you get here? What's going on um, with that story? Sorry, I'm processing that horrific tale that yeah, man. I just told. Let's um, get edgy. <laughs> um, well, there's not very much to tell about my story. Um, I was, I used to be a, um, an exalted bard of the court of Queen uh, Titania. Um, but due to politics and whatnot, I was. Um, let go from that court, and I uh, came to this company in, um, you know, search of another adventure and um, employment. And, yeah, that's really all I have to tell. Okay. All right. Um, so, Ryudo, he... He would probably talk about this a little bit. Um, but first, I'll say what he wouldn't talk about as Paul. I'll talk out of character for just a moment and say that, you know, Ryudo is first a blood hunter, first and foremost. And so he's been training practically his whole life outside of the Vale with his parents, almost in seclusion, out there away. Um, and during this training, he has been essentially preparing his body to sustain arcane magics within its own life force. Um, and throughout this whole entire process, he was raised with not mean parents, but the hobgoblin way of raising them is very jaded. You know, it's very much like you, you have to be looking out for yourself as soon as you can be. You know, you got to be taking care of yourself. And if you're not strong, you won't be making it very far kind of thing. And so Rito just grew up like that. And that's just the life that he was comfortable with. So when it comes around to it, he's very much like a, a quiet person who doesn't really want to try to go out there and deal with people as much as accomplish things that he wants to accomplish. Generally, people are an obstacle in the way for him. But that is something that might change later on. Um, nonetheless, in the game, what he would say is that he would be like, you know, I've had a similar story to that. Vernon, you said that you lost your sister, was it? My sister and my mother. And my sister, I kind of, you know, anxiously speak. I'm unsure if she still lives. And your mother was ripped apart there. For kinder words, I suppose, yes, she was killed. I understand. My my mistake if I overstepped there. Honestly, I've had interesting stories that my parents have told me growing up for long periods of time about different monsters that are in the woods, different monsters within the Vale. My character and definitely it would respond to this, not necessarily speaking, but kind of paying attention, you know, noting down in his mind that th that this Ryudo person he's encountered would may know more about finding his sister and and they killed his mother. Yeah, well, I've been looking in the woods. I've been learning about all these things in the Vale for a little while now. Uh, I've even run into one myself. And I was with my brother at the time. Um, it was a similar story where I really honestly had into the time and had the availability to see it. To really get good eyes on it. And unfortunately... 
It took my brother away. Killed never or taken? Body. It was taken, but there was blood. My condolences, I see. But perhaps, if your brother still lives, then my sister may as well. It was his own weakness. He tried to save me. It was foolish. But I want to let you know that I can keep my eyes out there. We're going to try to find this thing. If you are to find your brother and I to find my sister, I say we would be stronger working together. Though it would be new for me to do so. Ryuto lets out like a little smile before he like looks away awkwardly and he's like, fuck. Alright. You guys, you guys haven't worked together with a lot of people before? You know, I, I kind of looked down at my edgy ass costume and I'm like, no, I tend to keep to myself as I've been left alone for the majority of my life. Hmm. Well, I've always found it better to be with someone. And as, uh, hey, as I'm... Hey, hey, fuck tarts. Hurry up. Are you guys done chatting? Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just gotta feed Reggie real quick. You guys <clears throat> uh, hear the voice of Tyson, the more um, vocal and brutal <clears throat> of the two, uh, the duo that has brought all of you in, um, and uh, who introduced you to the organization. Um, you hear your door open, and uh, you see the smaller but definitely defined muscular frame of Tyson, uh, who's got a uh, bald head um, and wearing his studded leathers. Um, it's kind of a weird mishmash of, like, modern clothes were made out of like thick hardened leather is kind of how it looks it's uh but then you also see the taller and far more muscular jean claude with just a uh he's got a black like a dark black beard that goes uh down uh about to his mid chest uh he has long hair uh that also just hangs uh kind of in front of his face a little bit um wearing no armor just wearing like a tank a tight tank top uh and jeans and the two come up to you and say are you all fucking ready we're gonna get you geared up it's time for your initiation test i'm just gonna feed reggie real quick and i will reggie will be fine hurry no up need... let's go i grab i grab a banana from my out. like nightstand and okay put it in my pocket and head out yeah, yeah they... the rest of his equipment just goes I'm gonna... yeah they take you um down the halls you guys are in the organization you look uh you're in the main hall right now you look to your left and you see the most buttoned up professional crisp like almost like almost robotic looking office building ever everyone is in a suit or a nice dress um just doing their jobs walking around making copies doing filing um phone calls and you look to the right and you see what looks like a similar office building, same architecture. However, it looks like it has been in some disrepair. Um, there are many rooms that inside there are just like yours, cots, bedrolls. Um, they're kind of dingy. They inside some of them have like lanterns and you know traditional fantasy like uh, tables and like wooden tankards. Uh, and as you guys get to the center, you see the bar. Um, as I recounted before, there is a bar with uh, some music that's like playing. You're not exactly sure where it's coming from. There aren't speakers, but there also isn't a live performer. It just seems like it is ambiently around in this uh, tavern. There are a couple of other adventurer-looking people wearing a strange mishmash of modern clothing uh, for the 90s, and uh, also, you know, fantasy armor and leathers. You see a guy in, you know, in full plate sit down, uh, take off his helmet and start uh, eating a bowl of stew. But you also then see, um, like, someone in full rave gear just go and sit right next to him, and they start chatting like it's totally normal. Uh, this side of the place seems to be chaotic and alien compared to the complete perfect order of the right side 
uh, Tyson and Jean Claude are escorting you guys, and Tyson's like, uh, "We'll we'll just mention to all of you." Uh, so, as you all know, you have all been recruited to join the organization. However, that has not been 100% determined that you are qualified yet. Uh, you all have shown some level of aptitude, but we're going to need to see it in a real-world situation. Um, and they they take you down past the uh, past the tavern and bar area, uh, and you guys see a old-looking um, like uh, cellar the cellar doors that kind of open up and go down. Um, to the right uh, in one of these unused office rooms. Um, they look so out of place, it's crazy. Just going down into a place where, as far as you all know, this is one level. There is no up and down to the organization. Um, they uh, kind of shove you all in and say, good luck on the basement test. And they lock, slam and lock the door behind you. And as as that happens, I um, kind of like expand that ball that I was playing with, and out pops Reggie, my monkey. Pop him in here, and I feed him a banana. He's a he's small, by the way. Yeah, same size yeah. as you, right? Mm-hmm. And I feed him his little Three, banana. So now there's two of them. Yeah, Re- Reggie just oh, <laughs> and uh, takes the banana, and he just starts eating it. Uh, no, he eats the peel. Just chomping down on it, eats the whole thing. Doesn't peel it at all. And I, he seems real happy. Visible disgust to this. I'm like, ugh. Yeah. You're not even sure, like, where his mouth is. You, he doesn't look like a normal monkey. He does look, I mean, similar to a monkey. He's kind of like a ball. And you're not sure where his mouth is. You just kind of smashed the banana into a space under his nose. And it looked like he was chewing and it disappeared. Good job, Reggie. All right. Well, and he like Reggie like test. nuzzles up against uh, Doctor Fuse. Uh, well, uh, all right. Now that that's oh, over. get out, Victor! <laughs> Stop moving around. I disappeared. <laughs> yeah. I suppose we have a test we must complete. Yep. All right. Yes. Let's go. All right. You guys say so. You go first. You go first. Can everyone, can everyone see you down here? Shut the Bert. Shut the fuck up. It's yeah. uh, it's a bit dark. Oh, I would like to pull out a flashlight if you want to adjust my vision, please. Yeah, give me one sec here. Mm-hmm. Absolutely goddamn blind. Yeah, Rita doesn't mind oh. taking point. Oh, oh yeah, can I, can I put my flashlight on my, uh, my, uh, rifle? Just for, like, flavor purposes? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Just like duct tape it to it, or like tie it with some rope. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. I don't see why not. Um, I will reveal things when you guys decide to do anything other than stand in a room with a door in it. Oh, well, I mean, so it would, can, can we open the door? I can't really. I, see nobody's it. tried to do anything. The door, nobody's said. It's on the floor in front of you. Man. I just described it. Okay. We just well, got then in I guess I will go first to open the door. All right. Yep. Where's that? I'll go so... second. You head up front. That way, yeah. Yeah, that's the front. Yeah. Kind of arrange you guys yourselves in a way in the orientation you'd like to go down. Uh, you open up the stellar doors and there's a dank, musty scent of a basement and old liquor wafts up through these doors. Um, you see a bit of fl- kind of flickering, almost like firelight down uh, down these stairs. I take a. I, I would take in like you know. The scent, and I will turn around to the, and whisper to myself, well, I suppose it's an improvement. Smells like home. <laughs> really uh, start really meandering does. in, you know. Keeping, yeah, as you go watch. down, yeah, as you go down, you just see uh, a rat go skitter and skitter across the ground. And you see another one go kind of weave him all between your legs and then move out. They just seem to be kind of moving around throughout the, uh, this basement. Oops. I didn't to want to move that torch. To, to do what? Acrobatics check to catch it. Uh, I believe that would be an athletics check to do grappling, if that's what you're trying to do. 
Okay. Yeah, sure. I was thinking dexterity because it's like small and nimble, but I can. Yeah, but with athletics. within the mechanics of the game, I believe uh, it would be athletics. For sure, I can run that. <laughs> All right. After you, after you do this, I want to give everyone a bardic inspiration. By the way. <laughs> All right. Uh, you can only nice. you can give out five. So you're gonna give yourself yeah. and the rest of the party members one. Um, you can't give yourself. I, Are you gonna give the monkey think, one? Yeah, I give the monkey one, so I can give out to everybody. Yeah, nice. cool. Bardic inspiration. Everyone, you have one use of bardic inspiration. It is a D6 currently with Bird's Dirty. level. Wow. Um, is, to check for traps and stuff, is that an insight? No, that would be investigation. Like, so the difference between investigation and perception and insight. Insight is like somebody you're trying to read a person. Uh, perception is like catching something strange out of the corner of your eye that most people wouldn't see investigation is sitting down and doing a thorough look at something okay. mm -hmm. um and you got a 19 the rat got oh you got 22 yeah you beat it by quite a bit you catch it and uh what's your ac 17 you take one point of damage as the rat bites your hand Alright, I take a look at it, and uh, I say, I don't think we're alone down here, and I take just, it and I chuck it down the rest of the hallway. Uh, just like straight forward? I would prefer to get it over... Because these are I pillars think, that you right. see. I see this little line here, because I, I, I've got dark vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there are torches. You sh everyone should be able to see something. Yeah, I'd love to throw it just this direction here. Yeah, give me just uh, another athletics check. See how what your toss is like. All right. Okay, 12. Yeah, that's more than enough. You fling this rat. I mean, your accuracy isn't quite what you wanted it to be, and it hits this pillar, and it just you see it like its neck snaps, and it just drops to the ground. I definitely Not bad toss. I think that's pretty crass, but I don't mention it. I'm definitely gonna, you know, I don't, I don't trust anyone. That's just my edgy nature. I'm gonna roll, definitely roll investigation to see if there's a trap or something. You know that the actually before you do that, the moment that that rat is injured, uh, we are actually gonna need initiative. I was just trying to get what through that scene. I am so sorry, everyone, but you took offensive action. Uh, things were happening right away, and I apologize, Nick, that you weren't quite able to do something. That's okay. Uh... First we see what's in going combat. Oh, uh, you will. Okay. I got a nine. Do I make an initiative count? Oh, dear. Fifteen? Oh, if you guys roll your initiative in the... If you use the initiative roller, it'll automatically add you in. I don't know if you've done your character sheet too much yet, Paul. I've done a good amount of it. I set up a macro for my initiative, but... Yeah, so you can... I'll just put everyone in mechanically for right now. Okay. Oh, I put Marcus in twice. I'd be fine with going twice, man. <laughs> <laughs> I probably need the extra boost. You know what I mean? Nice. Why do chill? <laughs> Paul, if you want to pop in your initiative. Okay. It didn't work, it looks like, for the first one, but... Yeah, Still sorry. need initiative from Vernon to be put in. Mine's in. It just you said when you put it in, remember? Oh, I you guess can, I can, you can add it. Yeah, you yeah, can do you it. You can click on it. Oh, I got it. Okay. Let's make these a little bit more streamlined, you know? So 
So it said All I right. wanted to send it there, but no valid token was selected. So maybe I just had to. Sorry. Right. Uh, I get it. Yeah, you just gotta click on your guy first. I oh, tried to okay. click on it, but I had the measurement tool on instead of the selector. Amateur hour over here, Raudo. Absolute freaking bitch ass moves over there. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> <laughs> So with a nat 20 Man. on initiative. What? Bruh. Son of a bitch. I know. He's cheating. Well, you know, if I was, you'd never know. Uh, Two rats that look like they're five rats in one. They're big. One might even call them giant rats. Uh, Come bursting out of the barrels. Uh, this one is going to run up and attack Ryudo, as he was the one who harmed his little buddy. What? He was inside of a barrel. He didn't even know that. Oh, he wasn't. He was in between barrels. What if PewDiePie said, never trust a fucking barrel, dude? Yeah, that. Never trust a barrel, dude. B30. Uh, it's gonna definitely... Dash. Take it all the way up to, I think, there. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's good enough. And this one's going to get up right in Vernon's grill. It's a motherfucking rat. Uh, and, uh, the one that is next to Ryudo is going to attempt a bite attack. Okay. Uh, 17 to hit. 17 Ooh. meets. Meets it beats. Uh, this can be three points of piercing damage. Alrighty. <laughs> and now it's now your turn, Ryudo. Alright. Um, Rito is just gonna take his dual blade out, and he's going to take a swing on this guy, at this giant rat in front of him. Nothing fancy. 12 to hit, I'm going to... Instead of using... Hits. Okay, yeah. I was gonna say, I don't want to use the inspiration yet. Alright, um, well then let me roll my damage here. That is 2d4. Plus three. All right. Oh wait, and I can break my fighting style yet? Or is my fighting style level no. two? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, two, then, yeah. That is it. Seven damage. Um, can you describe this attack? You're swinging with quite a fancy looking weapon. I I would love to hear what it looks like. Yeah. So he pulls out. Ryudo pulls out his dual blade. So it's essentially a sword with two two bladed ends on it. So he takes his hands in the middle, does a quick flourish in the direction of the giant rat, and then as soon as he gets to the right side, he just swings it through, just takes a quick slash out of the side of this thing. A lot of spinning for this attack. And how does it perish as you uh, you flourish your double blade, Darth yeah. Maul? Yes, exactly, yeah. You you definitely see as this thing, just the solid, it's going to be like most of the arm and shoulder, but you're going to get a little bit of like the jaw that as well gets like slices within it. And uh, and yeah, it doesn't like split in half or anything, but there's a nice good gash just in the side of this thing. And uh, that is more than enough to destroy this uh, this rat. And as you kill it, just as the other one, it seems to, like, there isn't blood that goes everywhere, but it also does, it's not, like, robotic inside or anything. You just slice through it, and it just falls into, like, two pieces. Is it already dead? Can I roll on that to see if it's already a dead thing? Yeah, you're a blood hunter. All right. Can I use my intelligence? What would it be? Uh, This would be... Yeah, this would be an intelligence one. Okay. You have better intelligence than wisdom as a blood hunter? Yeah, but they can go either way. So oh, I got okay. 
intelligence. Cool. Um, that being said, if it is undead, then you know I want to see if necromancy was used on it. Yeah, go ahead and roll. Um, do I get advantage on this roll or no? Yeah, yeah. This, uh, what's your? Don't you have a favorite thing or is it anything? Well, that's why it's it's any of the celestial undead like fiend. If it's one of those types, then I get. A bonus okay, for it. I thought you had. It was like it's not like a favorite foe, like a ranger. No, yeah, it says. Da, da, da. You have advantage on survival checks to track Fey. Okay. Or, as well as intelligence checks to recall information about such creatures. Yeah, sure. Roll. Alright. Alright, so then that is a 17. 17. Um, You can tell that this is... It's not like... It's a strange juxtaposition because it is not undead, but it is made from organic parts. I would say it's similar to a flesh construct than it is a undead. Like how a flesh golem isn't an undead creature. Right. Um, but this is not alive, but it's also not undead. Well, I will say that it's not alive. Out loud, Rito's going to say, these things don't have blood. Take care. All right. Uh, and with that, is that the end of your turn? Um, I guess Rito's going to... Can he, like, get behind this guy here? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, he's going to do that. And then we've got the rats... 30 feet. Shit, a lot of rats. Yeah. Oh my god, that's a lot of rats. Okay. So you, you don't think that first move was so crass anymore now? I mean, it was crass because you, you picked up a rat and chucked it back against a wall, but... Yeah, I wouldn't have had to do it if he didn't deal a damage to me, but I kind of just let him keep doing that every turn. <laughs> yeah, it was going to keep doing that every turn. Right. Uh, for sure. These rats uh, scamper under the barrels. All the ones that you see on top of them um, mm -hmm. have gone under the barrels and are not reachable by you all. Yeah. Um, Dr. Fuse. All right. Um, I am going to tell, as my bonus action, I'm going to tell Reggie to go get this guy here. Kind of like All right. jump on him a little. I don't know if he can be in the space. Yeah, for sure. He's, these, you know, you can kind of see these squares, and those two are both small creatures. They can kind of squeeze. Um, and you are a monster tamer. Yes, I am. From Heliana's guide, this is exciting. I haven't seen yeah. one in play. Yeah, what do you do here? <laughs> He sends his monkey at stuff. Sixteen to hit, dude. Yep. How does uh, how does Reggie destroy this giant? He rat? just kind of like bashes it a little. <laughs> yeah, he just <laughs> and he just smashes just like a double fist pound down on top of its head, and uh, its head like kind of crunches down. But again, absolutely no blood. God, it's a shame I don't have your recordings in because I would have paid for that video of going going. <laughs> 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 okay. Um and I will That was just um, your bonus action, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just my bonus action. Um Uh We'll have to talk right. later, but his fists are not finesse weapons, are they? Um they aren't technically, but I was was hoping that they would be. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that sounds like unarmed. Maybe that sounds like something you might have to teach him. I would I would say like I know one of the things you can do is teach him to wield a weapon. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say yeah. you can definitely teach him to use his fists. 
Okay. Well, I'm not going to recount anything at this point, but um, for now, for the rest of this session, uh, we'll just use this, but then we'll we'll okay. fix it in between sessions because I don't want to change a bunch of macros around. I mean, it's just changing of a plus five to a plus. Oh, five. okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. What? <laughs> regardless. Um. Yeah. Try to use his. Str not. We're not going to redo this attack. Um. Yeah. But yes, he is. The fifteen have to... and seven still kill. <laughs> mhm. Mm fifteen and seven is still a kill. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, I am just going to, like, kind of sit here. All right. Um, yeah. Anything you want to do with your action? I don't really have much I can do right now. Okay. I'm not very strong, so it's not like I can push those barrels over. All right. <laughs> Vernon. All right, I'm going to kind of notice. I'm assuming I notice those rats going underneath the barrels. What's your yeah? You definitely saw that they that they did go under the barrels. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. You have of... lost line. Of, you've lost your active line of sight, though. I'm going to grab my shotgun to you know take it off my back, take it with the one hand, aim it at the barrels, and take a pot shot at the barrels. Sure, roll an attack roll. I'm gonna roll okay. die to see if you aimed at one of the rats or just at barrels. I'm hoping that really... even if I would have hit the like you know the shotgun would be enough damage to at least reveal them. But... You blast open the barrels and old old wine just starts glugging out of them um, as you just you know did a shotgun blast into a bunch of barrels. Uh, you don't hear anything else though. Okay. Um... Get them drunk. They can't fight if they're drunk. <laughs> they can't fight if they're fucking wasted. I don't know. Maybe they slip on the wine. We'll see. But I suppose that's my turn. Okay. Bert. All right. Uh, I'm going to move up next to Ryudo. All right. <laughs> and I'm going to give him some uh, words of encouragement. I'm going to say, Ryudo, I know you're a coward, but... I'm going to cast heroism on you, so you have to be brave for me, okay, buddy? <laughs> no, you're a coward. <laughs> uh, Ryudo, do you accept? Is, is Does heroism have to be cast on a willing creature? Yes, if it does. Uh, and, yeah, it's a willing creature, yeah. All right. Uh, Ryudo, would, do you accept the spell? It would fail. It would fail. <laughs> you can see <laughs> as, as Ryudo rolls his eyes super hard at, at what you said as you're doing it. The the spell slot is used as Ryudo refuses the spell you cast, Bert. Wow. I'm sorry, bud. I'm sorry. I saw that one fucking coming, not gonna lie. <laughs> I am filled with absolute rage. <laughs> Just your and happy ass, like. <laughs> Ryudo is, like, looking at you. It is, it's a moment of intense glare between the two of us. <laughs> Oh, I love I'm, that. I end my turn and just pull out. I I put my uh, I put my weapon away and just pull out my loot and start like picking on it like a <laughs> sad tune. <laughs> Great, Marcus. Um, so am I able to see any rats underneath the barrel that he shot? Um, it has. I mean, he shot the barrel like. Ale is just, and wine is just now starting to glug onto the floor. Rem you gotta remember, this has been like not even a second since he shot, can, since we're in the same round of combat. Can I can I um, speak to, to Marcus while he, when his turn comes around? Uh, you can speak on your turn. Okay. Um, but it is Marcus's turn, so if he, you could respond if he says something to you, but um, <laughs> if you want to initiate, nudge. if you want to initiate a conversation, it has to be on your turn. Okay. Um, and I don't really think Marcus would be concerned with what's going on, at least in your area, um, or like asking you anything. So I'm going to say that I would be pretty, pretty focused on taking care of the problem, especially towards the barrel you just shot. And Marcus is just going to, at the top of his lungs, give a good, ah! And just sprint towards the barrel and uh, stab, attempt to stab the one that was shot with my longsword. 
stab the same barrel that he shot? Yeah. Just uh, roll and tackle. Just give a good, give a good stab in there deep down. Uh, it's gonna be an eleven to hit. Uh, eleven. You hit those barrels, man. You chunk into them pretty good with that sword. All right. Um. I was kind of so hoping I'll even... uh, the druggie would uh, miss the inanimate object. Not gonna lie. Uh, you can roll. What's your passive perception there, uh, Marcus? Um, my passive perception. Give me a moment as I look about my character sheet. Isn't it like your? Where where would it even be located on this character sheet? Uh, it's just your wiz. What's your uh? What's your perception bonus? Uh, my perception is a plus two. Uh, you do you, so you don't have proficiency in perception? No. Then it's just a twelve, which is enough. You see, uh, you can tell after the shotgun blast and your sword swing, uh, there are no rats under this section of the barrels. Well. That that was my attack. I uh, just mm -hmm. sort of stab it, screaming at the top of my lungs, like ah, die, 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 die. I'm just stabbing my sword viciously. Jesus, that's uh, I'm definitely gonna remark to myself that's not very you know mellow behavior coming from the hippie. You did just shoot a gun, like right <laughs> off next in time. a enclosed room in a basement. <laughs> Everyone's ears are definitely ringing. Oh yeah, but uh, the, the dude's like, "Yeah, you want to smoke?" Going, die, 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 die. All right, uh, is that it, Marcus? Yep, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, Ryudo. All right. Um, Ryudo is going to run over to here. Okay. And he's going to ready an action to attack something that comes out close to him. Okay. That comes within his reach, but also within his line of sight too. Just. Uh, just what's within? You, what is your reach? Uh, five feet. Okay. Um, I didn't I know ready... if that had extra reach. No, no. Um, I am readying an action though for it, so it is okay. Close to action. Cool. All right. Next is the rat. Oh, wait, I'd love to say to Bert, don't fall behind as I run away from him. I don't even hear him over the sound of my loot. <laughs> All right, the rats begin to scurry out. Uh, one of them is going to go for... The monkey, two of them are going to come at Bert, and one of them is going to run up to Rayudo. Rayudo, go ahead and make your attack of opportunity, or your, you know, prepared attack. Right. Let's see if this macro works. Nice, it did. All right. 15 to hit. That hits. I cast Silvery Barbs. <laughs> All right. Roll with disadvantage, Rayudo. <laughs> Wait, is he trying to fuck him up? Still 15. <laughs> Alright, how do you kill this rat? <laughs> you can see as uh, as Ryudo like, trips up for a moment because of Bert playing some music. And uh, and he barely finishes this hit, but he does he does get the nick off on the side of this rat. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, did, exterminated. Did this, uh, did this motherfucker just use two spell slots? That? Yeah, he used two spell oh, slots. Yeah. I am how to spell again. <laughs> on on me. Nice, nice. Both both on you and both didn't go great. Uh Bert, you're able to give someone else advantage. Uh would you like to give someone else advantage? E including yourself. Uh, yeah, I'd give it to myself. <laughs> Alright. The next attack roll or saving throw you make will have advantage. Alright. Um then we're gonna do the other ones. Oh, of course. You kill the one that was 
in the turn order. <laughs> <clears throat> I remember when I was doing that with the Salt Marsh campaign, I just put a whole bunch of extra ones just on the side of the map I, so that I could just use them. I was going to do that and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we got two attacks coming at uh, Bert. Come at me, bro. A uh, six and a two. Ah, uh, nope. And then one attack going at uh, Reggie. Reggie. Reginald. Uh, a 15 to hit Reginald? Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, he takes one point of piercing damage as the All rat right. bites him on the ankle. Your turn, Mr. Mr. Doctor, Professor he Fuse. Yep. I am going to take a shot at one of the ones next to uh, Bert here. With my crossbow. My savior. Mm. Hopefully a six hit. Do you have Bardic Inspiration, Jen? Do I do have Bardic, but... So does, uh... Um... You have, you have your monkey. Uh, how does an 8 work? 8, unfortunately, isn't gonna connect. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna use... I'm gonna use my bonus action to command Reggie here. Mm -hmm. Attack the one in front of him. 12 hit. Yeah. Kills 8 damage. All right, it's Reggie kind of like grabs and like like flings it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Reggie just kind of grabs it and does like flings it behind him super fast and it splats against the wall, uh, slides down. Gross. Vernon. All right. Um, I will end up. I'm gonna walk up to these two rats over here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but with fire on the X-ray, um, I can make an attack with my sword and my gun. Does that have to be on the same target? No. Okay. No. Then no, I'm... the firearm experts, that feat that you took? Yes. That led... So when you uh, make a melee attack with your sword, you can bonus action, fire a gun? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, just so you know, uh, definitely the shotgun it has the two-handed property. It cannot be wielded with one hand. The pistol can be wielded with one hand. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Because right, the shotgun gonna... essentially has similar stats to a halberd. You j can't wield that with one hand. Okay. All right, I'm going to start with my, my, my long sword. <laughs> I'll mend that weapon later. Uh, Don't worry. I will... <laughs> I mean, I gotta, do I have to roll to see if it's great? No. No. no, no you no, missed. No, no. At one. Well, no, I mean, I can roll my, my bardic inspiration. That's not gonna help in that one, buddy. Oh. That is an yeah. auto miss. Uh, um, yeah, you, uh, I mean, you just go to stab down into the rat, and you stab into the floor, and it, you definitely see you blunted the very tip of your sword. Oh, no, I kind of like, damn. And then I, I, <laughs> enraged for the fact that, you know, Blunt to my sword, I pull out the old reliable and shoot it with my pistol. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that hit. Thankfully. Hey, you don't call it old reliable for nothing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And I just whip out my pistol and just look down and I'm like. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, you shoot it and it just explodes into <laughs> rat pieces that go everywhere. Oh wait, I'm assuming you shot the one that wasn't right next to you? Uh, no, I shot the one that was close to you. Uh, so you need to do that with disadvantage. No, I could not because of firearm expert. Oh, because of firearm expert. Right, right, right. Cool, cool. Yeah, you blast it. Nice. So anyway, you started blasting. Uh, again, everybody, your ears are ringing as another fire, uh, weapon was discharged in a sealed basement. God oh, damn it, that pump was too much. <laughs> Bert. Oh. 
My turn. Uh, yeah, I'll whip out my longsword. Or my rapier, I mean. Oh, yeah, and, do um, it up. Yeah. Fuck it, I'll do it myself. Uh, and then I'll take a swing at this uh, rat in front of me. Oh my. 15. Do I get a rat fish kebab? Let's see. You do indeed. Uh, let's go. Um, yeah, I'll just like overhand stab this thing through the floor. Yeah, I mean, you're not quite strong enough to pierce the stone floor. However, you do uh, have a rat on the end of it that, like, keeps moving its legs for a second, and then they slowly just, like, stop moving. And the rat uh, Am I noticing that these ones bleed? Nope, none of them have bled yet. Wait, do you say it deanimated, or it's still on, like, it's still on the end of my weapon, though? Right? It's still on the end of your weapon. It kind of, like, I was just, you know, giving a little description, but it le its legs kept moving for a minute, and then all, and then it slowly stopped and just okay. fell limp right. to the floor. It I'll is stuck to the end of your sword if you want it to be. Yeah, I'll run up to Ryoto and just kind of throw it down at his feet. Like, I actually can't do that, bud. <laughs> uh, you throw it down at his feet where there is a rat at yeah. his feet that he killed. <laughs> I don't even pay attention to that. I don't even pay attention to that. <laughs> uh, that intense, the intense glare between the two of us is back again. Yeah. <laughs> Just we, got some, we got some tension. Is this some a lover's quarrel in the making? Maybe. Could be. Um, it's you all see, good love stories you see me begin. pull out like a little bag, of, <laughs> little bag of berries and kind of split them with red. I'm like, good job, red. You did good. Berries. Is that an yeah. initiative over? Are we done with this? No, 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 no. Uh, it is oh. not. Marcus, your turn. Gosh, uh, I, I, I'm flabbergasted. Um, there's no more rats around me, and I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to move around. I only have 30 feet of movement, so I'm gonna map out here about where I can move. And yeah, I mean, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's, it, it's about over here. Yeah, those barrels are decimated, so you can step over them easily. Bye, Ryudo. I'm just like, you guys okay? Where's the next one? I ignore you. <laughs> I can barely see anything. I don't know. <laughs> um, my, my heart's beating fast. I just, I hold my action. If anything charges me, I'm just going to strike it. Okay. You can believe it. Something does charge, but not at you. Does he get an attack opportunity as long as it's you know, within his range? Nope, he already used his reaction this round. Even if he has something prepared? Uh, yeah. It would, yeah, it does use your reaction when you It uses are... your reaction to prepare an action. Yeah, you can only get one reaction per round. I say, even if it, like, well, for react, I know for, unless you have a feat or something, if it, if it comes into your range, you can't don't get an attack opportunity, right? It's just like, not, no, not unless yeah. you prepare an action. Unless you prepare an action, he said actively, "I'm going to spend my action preparing myself, so if anything comes near me, I can attack it." That's like right. he's setting you. Basically, yeah. you can set a condition, and that condition already happened this round. So, so basically, when you use your action to do that, you're saying, "I'm going to use my action and well, use my reaction Marcus, to do but... this." Not but for Marcus. For Ryota, yeah. I, I, I guess the way I saw it was the fact that he was preparing for something coming, you know, well until his next turn turned up. Right, but he used that action. That action has been expended. A reaction. Well, well a who's, reaction. who's getting charged? Ryudo's getting charged. Okay. okay. He's in the front. A swarm of rats oh, fuck. comes scampering scurrying out of those barrels. Alright. Na 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 hey goodbye. Alright, uh, <laughs> dirty 20 to hit. That hits. Five piercing damage. Oh. 
Gudo drops a little bit to a knee. Are you still up? I'm still up. I got five health. Damn. It's your turn, Ryudo. Alright. If only Ryudo. your bard hadn't spent all his spells fucking with you. I would love if to only you were have her HP right room. now. Well, you refused the spell, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you could have some temp HP right now. You could have five temp HP. Mm -hmm. Alright, so Ryudo is going to use his blood maledict. Um, and it's blood okay. curse. Does that of... work on a swarm? Um, that's a good question. I have no idea. I don't think see. it does because it has to target a creature and this is a swarm of creatures. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then, is never that, mind. Is that for sure? Did you see it? Uh, well, I'm looking at Blood Maledict, and it, it says, each time it before the target, da, 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 you gain one additional blood curse. Uh, if it's a target. A swarm. Yeah, I feel like target is different than... Yeah, 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 yeah. Than a creature. Okay, I have to, like, look specifically at the blood curses apparently to to find this. Okay, hold on. At first level begin the ability to channel or sometimes sacrifice a part of your vital essence to curse and manipulate creatures with hemocraft magic. You know one blood curse of your choice. Each time you use your blood maledict feature, you choose a curse to invoke from the curses you know while invoking a curse. Before it affects a target, you can choose to amplify it. Uh, taking that damage from your one roll of your Hemocraft die. No, you can definitely target a swarm with it. It just says target. It doesn't say, and it, every time it says the word creature, it says creatures multiple. Go ahead. Okay. Um, this will take my bonus action. Okay. And it says, as a bonus action, you mark a creature that I can see within 30 feet of you until the end of your turn whenever you hit the cursed creature with a weapon attack. Um... Oh, for which you have a Crimson Rite. Active. For the Crimson Rite. All right, so never mind. I don't use that right now because okay. I Crimson Rite. You don't have your Crimson Rite yet. Yep. All right, so just going to swing normally here. Okay. Oh, okay. Got the hit. All right, 10 damage. That's a dead bunch of rats. 20 to hit for 10 damage. Yep. You chunk those rats pretty good. Not uh, a dead bunch of rats. They <laughs> do not even yet seem to be halved. Yeah, Ryudo's gonna say, I'm not looking great, guys. That's all he says. Who's we? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Fuse. All right, I am going to move my 30 feet. Do you have 30 feet of movement? Or yes, 25? I have oh, 30. Right. Yeah, they kind of went for all of us to... Everyone to have 30. These yeah, days. who has 25? What? Small creatures what? typically have 25. Is that a door? Uh, uh, they might. Come up yeah. with me here. And we're going to... I I can only command him to move, right? Uh, no, you can command to move and attack. Okay. If he's if he move can get up here and throw a rock as I take a <laughs> shot with my crossbow here. Sure, yeah, he he'll pick up a chunk of that barrel and throw mm -hmm. it. Those aren't just rocks on the ground. Reggie hit Nat twenty. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Nat twenty. 20. So that's first 10 damage. damage. The first crit of the campaign was a monkey throwing a barrel. We turned the monkey. <laughs> uh, you guys all turn around uh, and see... Uh, actually, you describe it, uh, Dr. Fuse. Yeah. How As Reggie was like, climbing over some of the hunks of the barrels, he grabbed like one that looked half, I guess, or like pick up for him, and he just like grabs it and like overheads it. At, at this fucking large pool of rats. Yeah, like Donkey Kong in the OG games, uh, yes. Reggie picks up a barrel and hucks it, and it just... Actually, a better equivalence is uh, in Shrek, 
when Donkey mm-hmm. is running on top of the giant barrel of ale and just flattens all those guards. Yeah. That's exactly oh, what happens. God. This barrel just flattens half of the swarm of rats. And then my crossbow shot here. Hopefully that does something. Uh, does a 14 hit? Yeah. Describe how your crossbow shot uh, shish kind of like, the last couple. Kind of like Ooh. knelt down and like shot my hand crossbow. Like some of these guys are shooting their pistols and such, and that just kind of like skewers through them. Yeah, just <clears throat> you guys hear, and a small uh, bolt goes through the head of three rat, the last three rats, uh, and there's just a pile of dead rats in front of you, Ryudo. Oh man, Ryudo is gonna like kind of take a second. <sighs> Fuck, anyone else got hurt there? <laughs> Reggie, like, looks at it. He's got, like, a little bite mark on his ankle. But other than that, no. Yeah, we may have won, but Vernon definitely looks a little defeated that the most amazing thing he's ever seen in his entire life was done by a monkey. <laughs> um, well, Ryuta, after a moment, is going to try to stand up and, and mask the pain that he's in. Just act like I don't need anything. Okay. I'm gonna cast prestigitation on your shorts, or on whatever pants <laughs> you're wearing, and uh, make them soiled. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so they just <laughs> smell. Do they smell soiled, or is it like the clean, the no, opposite no, of a cleaning just, one? They just appear soiled. So like, there's a, like a little wet spot. Like he kind of wet himself. Okay. Yeah. That you guys see that. That's what you see. You don't feel it, Ryudo. <laughs> Does it go away after a few minutes? Is that how precision is? An hour. I think it's an hour. I kind of I notice I I notice a little something on his pants. I'm like, ah, he must have shot the cow with a cut. Dude, that's <laughs> better not have been another fucking spell slot. I swear to God. No, it's a oh, no. I just started yelling. Awesome. You got it, kid. I'm just laughing. I'm just laughing. Got again. <laughs> Yeah, Ryudo's gonna act like he's unaware of it. Because he is unaware of it. <laughs> you got it, Actually, uh, Bert, Bert, roll a uh, sleight of hand check. Alright. To cast a spell without Ryudo noticing. Yeah, yeah, it does have. Passive perception. Oh, yeah, one so, It's a 10. Uh, Solid 10. It's 10? Jesus. Did that do it? Oh. The least perceptive blood on it. <laughs> yeah, I can investigate things a little bit though. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, I don't think uh, anybody no. has a sixteen passive. Um, oh, I have you a twelve. Got, yeah, you all just notice that Ryudo has a little stain. No, it's a big stain. It's like eight. Oh, inches. it's like all the way it's, down his leg. It's going down his leg. Yeah, he was super scared. What do I? Okay. Uh, what do I check my passive perception at? It's so it's your... just ten, 10 plus your wisdom or your perception modifier. Yeah. Mm. How much would I have to be to 16? Yeah, what's your perception? You need plus a, plus I, I would have a 14 out of 16, unfortunately. No. Yeah, you would need a 16. Um, to have caught him doing the hand signs, you know, doing his Naruto hand signs in order to cast the spell. Reggie and I are going to look around. Yo, is this, are you two like yeah. fucking else. Naruto and Sasuke? Like, what are we going on here? We are, yeah. Potentially. Oh, it's, more it's, like, it's I would say more like Goku and Vegeta. I can, I can see that too. <laughs> um, Ryudo's gonna move forward and he's gonna investigate for pressure plates and trip wires going around this corner. Yeah. yeah don't throw any rats before you do that, though, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Apparently not. Alright. 17. Uh, you notice, um, hold on, go back. There is a tripwire right here. Ah. Ooh. All right, I kind of bent down for a moment. I'm like, hold up, everyone. Got a trap. <laughs> you just see Bert right. Marianne and just walk right over <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna say, does anyone have any sort of these tools that they can use to to disengage this? Um, 
No, but I can try to harvest its parts, if that's what you're asking. Uh, not me, man. I, I don't mess around with stuff like that. Yeah, no. I usually uh, set the traps. Right, I mean, it's it's a tripwire, so you could walk over it. But uh, I believe if you can harvest the parts from it, it might be worth trying to set it off from a safe distance. What would that safe distance be? Um, can I look around to see if maybe there's like arrows that launch out or if there's like anything that falls from above me? Like maybe what the trap um, would be? I'm going to say the 17 was your role to kind of investigate that. You, from where you are, cannot see any danger from this trap. You just know there is a trap set. Okay. Uh, can I investigate it as well? Yeah, go like ahead. After, after he points it out to me. Uh, I'll give him the help um, action here because what do we get you're gonna help him. You know I, I can help him here. You already looked for it. I'll help him. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's fair. Nope, um, you don't know anything. Notice anything different? Damn. He has advantage. Roll again. Oh, roll again. Roll again, okay. Bert. All right. Oh, Vernon what? also giving it a look. Nope, nobody can see it. All right, All right guys. Um, this trap how about everyone complete. backs up and Richie will throw a, a barrel at it? I can also okay. shoot it. Okay. Rito runs the fuck away. Yeah, yeah I back up a fair amount. And Reggie and I kind of work together to roll a barrel at this thing. Yeah, uh, just roll, uh, roll a strength check with advantage. You can use Reggie's strength. Uh, oh. thirteen. Oh yeah, wow. you send it. Um, and the barrel rolls. It rolls over the tripwire. You guys hear a click, and you see a barrel come flying across, fr like this way, <laughs> like from over here, kind of where you guys couldn't see. Um, it comes like so fast and smashes into these barrels over here. Is there just wine pouring all over the place now? Uh, you actually notice that only uh, some of these barrels have anything in them. Um, there was only one in the front that you blasted that had anything, and none of the ones that just were rolled were full. About to say, those were full. I would be surprised if anyone got through these tests before us that didn't destroy any barrels. That probably would have really hurt you guys. What the hell? Yeah. Reggie and I are gonna go take a peek around the corner here. Yeah. Ryuta will go behind you. Vernon will follow him too. And I will investigate the area as well. Definitely gonna okay. keep my pistol at the ready. Cool. Uh, Marcus is sort of cowering behind his sword and shield, just sort of walking in the back of the pack. Um. I'm gonna uh, dispel the piss stain on right out of his pants real quick. Okay. Uh, nat 20. <laughs> nat so 20. 26. Alright, so there definitely was a uh, spring loaded mechanism with like a thick, heavy spring um, that when the tripwire was uh, tripped, it launched one of the barrels from this pile right here straight up northwards. Um, you also notice a this at the bottom is like rubble that looks like it is a tunnel that goes uh, kind of down and uh, to the south. Damn it. What do you say to us? Uh, well, there's, I mean, it looked like there was some more stuff that was going to come at us. Nope. Alright, it's all clear. Move forward. <laughs> Can I uh, investigate the pit? Mm hmm. Eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, so, as you guys have gone through this kind of dank cellar, um, you. I would even say with the Nat 20 earlier, these are not even real torches. Um, they seem to be giving off, like, a flickering simulated torchlight. Um, and as you see, like, you're looking at this uh, tunnel, and the rocks seem to, you notice, like, repeated patterns. 
of how these rocks are distributed kind of in around this tunnel um and uh, in the tunnel it looks too it looks intentionally irregular if that makes sense um the rocks don't look like it we were just burrowed through it looks like someone was trying to make these rocks look like they were not normal and not like tunneled through Hmm. Someone made it look like they wanted us to see that it was out of place. You think that it just looks. It looks. I don't. I, it looks procedurally generated. Okay. Hmm. I suppose well, I, I would probably uh, voice that, you know, this doesn't look natural. It doesn't look like anything made this, you know. That, you kind of noticed that you kind of noticed that about and with that especially with that nat 20 you notice that about everything down here the barrels look like they're copy paste of the other barrels um the torches don't look regular the patterns of the stones on the walls look like if you look at them you can see kind of where the pattern was like a square of that pattern was picked up and repeated and moved they did a really good job but with a nat 20 you can see it. Can I like poke the torch with my sword? Sure. Okay. Do I need to roll something or can I just do it? Are you trying to put it through the flame or through like the sconce that's holding it? Just, I'm just kind of like, you know, just poking at the flame, whatever. Just poking at the whole thing. Uh, so when you go towards the flame, your sword just like passes through it. As if there's nothing there. Okay, um, can I uh, go to touch the, the flame then with my hand? Yeah. Yeah, it, you don't feel anything. It just feels like it feels a little bit warm, but not like all right. Abnormal. Well, Reggie and I are gonna walk over here and Rito's gonna start, rum over. start rummaging through. Yeah, Rito's gonna look over at Vernon and say, "Can you grab that torch off the wall or no?" Uh, I'm I'm sure. Can I? Can I? I'm gonna grab at the uh, the actual handle of the torch. Uh, the torch is like, it's like a sconce. It's not a, you can't remove it. Does You'd have to hand, break it off of the wall. Does my hand go through it? No, it's a wooden torch. It's just like attached, right? Well, it's attached to the wall, but I have never seen this type of fire before. It's, it's almost as if it's an illusion. Anyone yeah. who's existed beyond the veil is fully aware of light cantrips and magical light. Well, um, you do know that this is our test, right? They're putting us through this, so they had stuff made. I'd like to ask, can anyone here produce light? Magical light? Uh, I cannot, but you know, it's okay. I'm sure I might be able to eventually. If if I had more spell slots, I could potentially detect that. But well, it's not harming us in any way, so we just kind of leave it there. Peculiar. I suppose you're right. I I walk away. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna rummage through this little thing at the end of the hallway. Uh, you can see it's a tunnel going down. You and uh, Reggie can easily scamper your way down there everyone else is gonna have to if they want to get down they're gonna have to you know squeeze and like lay on their bellies and try and army crawl through does it go like straight down no it goes kind of down and then it levels out uh to like it goes down kind of at an angle not super steep for maybe 10 feet and then it levels out and then starts to open up going towards the south i'm gonna look All at right. uh, the doctor and i'm gonna like how do you feel of asking your friend there to scout ahead? Well, I'm gonna go with him, so I don't feel too bad about it. Very well. <laughs> yeah, the two uh, fuzzy little creatures in your party are uh, easily able to scamper down this hole. Um, it's kind of split the difference between them army crawling inside of it, since I can kind of see in the dark here. Okay. Uh. We're gonna move to the next map, but if you're not there, don't be, don't, you know, you don't know you're there. Um, you come out, I've just, I put a dynamic lighting wall 
around you guys. Okay. Can you shrink, Reggie? Are you able to do I it? I do not, no. Okay. Um, the two of you can't share a square. These We do have actual squares on this one. Um, so if you guys all decide to come down here, you will open up uh, as you come down and you see a large cavern. If you can see, uh, it is completely pitch black dark down here. Oh, I can't assuming, see, guys. I'm assuming that um, the doctor told us that, you know, it's, you know, not anything harming us immediately. And I mentioned earlier that I brought, I took out my torch. So my, my okay. plastic torch, as they would say. So I would have a flashlight. All right. Let me edit you real quick. You emit light for 20 feet. I mean, it would be for everyone because it's not like the flashlight only affects me. Well, uh, you're emitting light. Yeah. Okay. You're a light bulb. <laughs> oh, God. As I kind of come out of the hole, um, I'm going to look around to see if I can, like, see anything, like, immediately in front of me. Yeah. As you come out, you crawl out of this hole. You're covered in dirt and uh, rocks as you... You kind of pull yourself through. You kind of got to punch through a little bit of uh, debris at the end in order to get past. Uh, but you open up into a uh, a dark cave. And since now you've seen it, again, with that nat 20, you see, again, this procedurally sort of generated cave wall. Like, such the most generic cave wall that could ever exist um, in this small sort of rectangular chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the very yeah. end, you see a nest with a massive over twice the size of the other rats. This rat is as, looks like uh, a large dog, um, like a husky or even bigger. You know, one of those like, like Siberian like dog hunt or bear hunting dogs. They have a, I kind of looked around and I was like, yeah. I think to myself, I was like, hmm, they want me to kind of slip up the game a little bit here. These and it goes, are always, always amazing here. And then I kind of look around and see this massive rat. Like, oh, shh. Hmm. And we're going to need initiative. Um, everyone except You're for right. Dr. Fuse is in the hole crawling currently. I was about to say, right? Oh. I'm in the front. Yep. Yeah. I'm just going to look around. I'm going to look around as long as I can. What was the trash. order that you guys went down through the hole? <gasps> Um, I, I was either last or second last, I think. I was definitely behind Viudo, but I think it was... You said yeah. you were last, Vic? I think, or second to last. Uh, Marcus, do you want to go last or second to last? Uh, second to last, I think. I, I probably Perfect. felt pretty close behind. Alright. Um, so you all are going to have to move. You're going to be five feet behind each other. Um, and it is difficult terrain to crawl through here. Okay. Yeah, kind of right there would be your the space you're in. There, you want me you to know. use the actual initiative or can good. I use my macro? You can do whatever you want, but you got to plug in the initiative yourself. Okay. Yeah, you might have to have me to the turn order this time. Ooh, it didn't work. Oh, that's oh, hold on. Nat 20. I forgot, I got to redo initiative. We might have to... Re does that mean we get to guys... Are you guys going to like select your character and then roll with the oh, character yeah, sheet? Here, Alex, you're actually yeah, behind too. him. This is like a five foot wide. I was just covering up a logo. Oh. Yeah, it looks much bigger than it is. This is so terrifying, I can't even see the creature about to fight. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> Wait, can you see it with your dark vision? Oh, or right? I can see farther into the cave, but I still can't see the bad thing. Damn. Fuck. I can't see very far at all. Yeah, I can. Even when I was, like, put out next to um, Dr. Fuse, 
in case you couldn't see it. All right. Um, so combat has begun. Vernon, unfortunately, you are not able to crawl past Ryudo in this tunnel that you guys are, you know, barely able to even squeeze through. Okay. Uh, is there anything you'd like to do? Uh, you can't move forward. Probably just like, hurry up, fat ass. <laughs> okay. Dr. Fuse, this rat has uh, made eye contact. It's, it's just massive matted fur. It's missing fur in some spots. Uh, mouth drooling, red beady eyes. It has made eye contact and locked eye contact with you. Yep. I'm going to kind of take like a little step over here. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess like up, up a little too. And, um, I'm going to take a shot with my hand crossbow here. You should call down to us, too. I miss. Um, and as I command Reggie to kind of run up in front of me and take the dodge action, um, I will. Javuni, get, you, get up here. This is, uh, this is terrifying. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. Marcus, you're kind of stuck there. Is there anything you'd like to do? So, I don't really think that there's anything I can do, at least. Uh, spells, I, I'm not, you know, a spellcaster yet. So, uh, I, I would like to use my divine sense and... Mm -hmm. sense to see if there's anything particularly fey, celestial, fiend of that uh, nature. There's a fey directly behind you. There's a strong presence of fey. Okay. Um, but you don't sense anything else. Uh, Alright, I'm, I'm just trying to get my bearings and uh, just gonna continue sque squeezing through this hole. I yeah. guess if there's anything I can do to like prepare movement to just follow behind I guess yeah, delaying you could, my like, initiative you could, would like, be... You could, you could delay your initiative, or you could hold a dash. You know, you could hold a movement. Right. Okay. Uh, I suppose that's what I'll do then. I will hold my dash, and then the moment I uh, can get free of this, I'll dash forward into the cool. opening. Great, love it. Nice. Now it is the king rat... Uh, it is going to charge forward. Pack. I've heard of not, this. It's a king rat, not a rat king. It's a They're different. <laughs> um. All right. It is going to make one bite attack and one claw attack at As disadvantage. Disadvantage? Yes. Because of dodge action. What's his AC? Uh, he's going to hit with the bite, miss with the claws, thanks to the disadvantage. Nice. Uh, he takes... So this is a medium creature. The ones upstairs were small creatures. Um, mm -hmm. Five piercing damage. Okay. okay. Reggie lets, lets out a little squeal. Yeah, it's a rat. The massive rat just, you know, grabs, you know, as uh, Reggie's dancing around, it grabs a hold of Reggie's tail and just bites into it as hard as it can with this little rat paws. Uh, Ryudo. Okay. Um, so I am crawling here, so this would be mm -hmm. 10, and then would that be 20? Yeah, to, like, stand up. Well, I guess you're prone after, after you get to that part. So then I'll let you use the rest of your movement to stand up. Okay. Um, well, then I will do that. And uh, I'm going to call out to um, Dr. Fuse, and I'm going to say, Doctor, I'm glad I can work with you. I think it might be best if you stand behind me. We'll figure it out later. <clears throat> and then I'm going to ready an action to attack something that comes within my range. Or my range. All right. Or it's ready to attack a hostile creature that comes within my range. Sounds good. <laughs> Bert, you're kind. You're kind of. 
<laughs> You're stuck in the tunnel. Do you have any sort of fey tricks that can get you through this tunnel? Uh, Bert? Oh, um... You've got two bodies in front of you. You can't really climb forward at the moment. Hmm. Also, everyone, remember, if you haven't used it yet, you still have Bardic Inspiration. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, okay, so I can't, I can't really go forward physically. No. Um, Marcus had readied an action so that he would be able to dash once the space was in front of him. Ooh. Just yeah. to follow the line, essentially. Marcus, Marcus, that is a good idea. I will also go for the dash. Alright. Vermin. Vernon. Vermin. That's Vermin. a Vermin. Vermin. Alright, uh, do I have enough movement to get out of here and stand up? Sure. Okay. Gonna... You can get up right to the right or left of Ryudo. I'm gonna just be able to see this rat at like the edge of my vision. I'm like, holy fuck! It's a big ass rat. Yeah, it's 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 as probably weighs as much as you do. I'm, I'm, that's like breaking the edge of character. I'm just like, oh, oh, what a fiend! And I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going to how far away am I from this thing? Uh, you're gonna have disadvantage on the attack because it is obscured in the uh, dark light. Oh, boom. Okay. Um, what's my range for a shotgun? Shotgun's twenty feet max. Okay. And there's disadvantage at uh, two, sixty or something like that. No, no, the shotgun is at ten, between five and ten feet, it r shoots normally. Between ten and twenty feet, it shoots at disadvantage. It cannot shoot farther than that. Okay. Then I'm just going to make a uh, range attack with my pistol then. Sure. Yeah. Make it roll again. Disadvantage. Oh. You do hit. Nice. Okay. Mm. Um, nice. No crit. It's a nat twenty, but with disadvantage. That's a uh, breaks my heart. Yeah. It does. Right. Takes four points of damage. Why? That sucks. I rolled a six. Or six, I'm sorry. Okay. Alright, um, I don't think there's anything else I can do. So, when I'm out of movement, uh... I'm you have a bonus it. action, is the only thing you have left. Gonna Probably reload. We're gonna have to, I, I don't remember exactly, but I believe pistols... Does a firearm have, expert have... Ignore oh, the you ignore property? the loading property. I think it does. Never mind. Or yeah. you can reload as a bonus action. Ignore the loading quantity of the firearms with with which you are proficient. Which you are proficient with those firearms. So yeah, never mind. Don't worry about it. All right. Yeah. All right, that's the end of my turn. Doctor Fuse. All right, Reggie. Bash him. Thirteen hit. Thirteen. Hits, just right. barely. And then I'm gonna shoot him with my crossbow. So he takes okay. eleven. Eleven total. total. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's a long okay. range? Five feet. Five feet. Five feet. Five feet. Five feet. Uh, you Marcus. So you question. did. I'm sorry, Marcus. You had. Your opportunity came up, and then uh, Bert's opportunity also came up. So I'll have both of you guys moved out, and you start your turn standing in the places you were in the squares that I've placed you in. Okay. Um, but it's your turn, Marcus. All right. Well, um, Marcus is, is feeling a bit courageous in this moment, and he's going to kind of do what he did uh, with the brats in the barrel. Let out a lard. Ah, ah, he's going to make a charge for the the rat with his sword and, and try to stab it so we will can you uh see I, i'm sorry i don't know your um... yeah I, I can see the rat here now yeah is it 
covered? Is it like so I think you fully get lit or dimly lit at the moment? Dimly lit. Yeah, because he's okay, getting light so you're gonna have me. yeah, so you have disadvantage because it is uh you don't have dark vision at the moment. Okay, so an eight. Uh, well, actually, would it be dis? It wouldn't be disadvantage. It would be like it has three quarters cover. Uh, and so it actually just gets a plus four to its AC, not disadvantage. I'm sorry, Nick, but you. Damn. I'm just realizing this. You still your first roll was still the fifteen, yeah. so the nat twenty didn't matter. Um. Okay. I'm glad that I fixed that. Uh, Marcus hits. For okay. eight damage. Nice. It's now its turn. It is going to spin uh, and did sweep. You, did you roll damage? I thought you just rolled twice because you had disadvantage. Yeah, I meant to roll twice. Oh, sorry. I thought the damage. eight was your damage. No, I rolled the wrong, uh, the wrong attack. Okay. Yeah, roll um, the run that spin that damage die. Spin that damage die. So we're gonna be rolling a D eight. Plus two. Seven. Decent Pretty damage. Similar. Pretty similar. All right. Uh, now it is the rat's turn. It is going to sweep with its tail. I need uh, Reginald and uh, actually, you know what? It yeah, might, please, that's his father's gonna, name. It's gonna move. Taking the attacks of opportunity from Reggie and uh, Marcus. Go ahead and swing an attack of opportunity from each of them. All right. Reggie dealt eight more damage. Nice. Dude, Reggie fucks. What the hell? Reggie absolutely dude. fucks, dude. Reggie's carrying. It's a point <laughs> for me. Okay, well, here, here's the thing. It left cover so yep does that mean he, he hits with that nine or no he wouldn't have hit with the nine either way um also it his attack was while it was still in cover yeah uh all right it is going to do its tail sweep everyone within 10 feet that's everyone but bert needs to make me a dexterity saving throw oh god not great at those. Reggie got an 11, I got a 13. Okay. Those? I got an 11. Oh, you guys have bardic. Oh, that's right. I'll use it. I got 16. Yeah, where's my 14. saving throw? What do I need to roll for that? So, uh, if you go back to your, uh, Abilities. Reggie's gonna use his party. And your ability yeah. scores, it's like the little dice clicker right next to that. Okay. Oh, shoot. What am I, prof what am I proficient at for my... Uh, You're a fighter. Life? You're a fighter, so whatever fighters... I think it's dex and strength. Right, or strength and con. I don't know, hold on. Yeah, something like that. I think it is strength and con. I'll check right now. We're gonna find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Beep, beep, beep. Uh, yeah, strength and con. So it's just your dexterity modifier, Nick. Okay, so next time on Dragon Ball Z, watch the monkey do better than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty typical, honestly. Yeah. Oh, if, you're, if you're going by freeze the stage, no. Oh no. The crew Unfortunate. finds out they were monkeys all along. After all that work to figure all right. out the math of So, things. what do we got here? Uh, Bert, did we get a dex save? Oh no, we didn't need one from Bert. Nope. Okay, what nope. did everyone get? Starting with Reggie and Fuse? Uh, Thirteens. Okay, Marcus? Fourteen. Ryudo? Sixteen. And Vernon got a one. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, Fuse and Reggie. Unfortunately, it was a DC 14 deck save. Um, each of you are going to take 14 bludgeoning damage, and you are knocked prone. Oh, uh, we're both down. Okay. Oh, my God. Um, 
and then everyone else is going to take seven bludgeoning damage. Alright, Ryudo is knocked down. Alright, we so got what three. Do I, what do I take? Seven. No, you take, I'm sorry, you take 14 and you're prone. Uh, 14 will take you out. I think you don't have you don't have more than 14 hit points. Yeah, no. Neither do I. Yeah. All right, hey, no Bert. One. No one will have 14. Party white. You look okay. at this rat and it looks fucked up. It looks All bad. Right. It I, and I'm not I'm not cheesing you guys on this. Uh, if Marcus had hit with his uh his opportunity attack, it probably would have gone down. But, uh, Ryudo, let's get a death save. All right. Nat 20, you pop back up. All right, let's see it. Uh, all right, that's one success, though. That is one success. Bert, your turn. Um, you wish you had all those fucking spell slots. Yeah, too bad you don't have cure wounds anymore. Yeah. If only I had a heroism. Yeah, I didn't have a heroism. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can use <laughs> my bargain for, uh, well, what is that? It's a one. Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, well, I'll... Wait, Marcus, uh, Marcus, you went down to seven damage? You said you did 14 to me. No, 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 you did, you took seven. You got a 14, you succeeded on the save. Oh, I see. No, I'm not down yet. Okay. Okay, I cast uh, Vicious Mockery then. All right, uh, it needs to make a Wisdom I... save. Yep. It rolled I'm a two. Saying, uh, two. Rolled a two, okay. So what do you say? Forward. How do you how do you viciously mock this rat? Uh, I just call him a bitch made cat. Uh, does it say that it has to have a certain intelligence in order to be affected by vicious mockery? No, because it's a wisdom save. That's uh, uh, what's it called? There's a different spell that does that though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I think it's whispers? just in, just in whispers. Yep. Okay. Uh, so D four. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's my turn. All right, it is not quite down yet, uh, but it Jeez. does have disadvantage on its next attack roll, mm -hmm. thanks to those cutting words uh, or vicious mockery. Vermin, Ver vermin, <laughs> vermin. Vermin. Again? Dude, the R next to the N on there makes it look like an M. Mm -hmm. And it would be v Vem. Uh... Uh -huh. I well, well, you know. <laughs> Vermont, okay. eh? Vermont. A D20. Fucked up. Oh, I got fucked up. Vernon, bleeding out on the floor. That's one failed death save. I'm spitting out blood like. <laughs> Wait, did you take fourteen there? Yeah, he rolled a nat one. Oh. <laughs> Alright, hopefully we can pop back up here. Straight up, one of my characters. Yes. Oh my oh, god! Wow. Oh. You shouldn't have rolled 2d20s, but your first one was a nat 20. So uh, I'm gonna I take. I have to. He rolled one for both of them. Oh, so is that. Alright. I'm, I'm gonna... up. I'm up. Okay. Yeah, he, Fuse is up. Reggie is still down. But he okay. passed. Yeah, I think in the future, it's just important to clarify which one is which. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I was gonna say. I'm always first. Let's <laughs> that we'll stick with that then. You're always first. Nat yeah. twenty. You are conscious at one hit point. You wake up yeah, after dude. this rat just bludgeoned you with its tail. This you know, it's like a python. Around. Yeah, do I have any actions? Yeah. Top of your turn. All right. You are prone, but it's the beginning of your turn. Yeah, I'm gonna stand up and take out my short sword and start swinging it. <clears throat> do it. Uh, three that's damage? definitely a hit. Three damage. It is just still holding on. Okay. Uh, Marcus, you are still conscious. We've corrected that. Yep. I, uh, I'm not feeling great, though. So, I'm sort of... This rat uh, looks like it is... It... It's not bleeding at all, as you as the other rats weren't. But it's like movements are starting to get more erratic and they seem less fluid. So 
Marcus, it actually looks really bad. Marcus looks around at the uh, almost, you know, dead teammates he has around him, one bleeding out across the, the way from him as he looks at the rat, and another beside him already passed out. Uh, I witnessed Dr. Fuse sort of wake back up miraculously, but is still injured, obviously, and, and those that fear you guys saw earlier as I was screaming and charging is, is sort of gone as his eyes sort of look like they're filled with tears as if that he's mourning the fight already but this time he's going to charge with determination and it's silent but he, he's going to charge this rat and try and try and hit him oh with that yeah roll finally, it up dude finally see marcus getting serious here uh if you want you could get around it and flank it I mean, I I didn't hit it. I don't think. If you flank it, you have advantage. I mean, do it. yeah. Do it. You definitely have the movement. Okay. Come on, Marcus. All right. Save us all. I I'll I'll try. If you miss, I might die. <laughs> it's a twenty to hit. Roll damage. Five Mar damage. Marcus, finish the king rat. So as I, uh, as I just previously described, I'm, I'm sort of like tears swelling now and, and emotional. And it's not until I get up to the rat and make a long sl swipe with my long sword of slashing damage, I just cut right across this rat's throat. And then as I feel it sort of give with the sword, I, I let go of it. And, uh, I mean... We can play with this however we want, but Marcus is going to run up here to the teammate who's bleeding out immediately after combat ends. And you'll see him sort of get down on one knee and hands gesturing in sadness as he as he thinks this man's dying here. And you'll see for a brief second for the first time ever any type of magical thing has ever happened in Marcus's life. His hands begin to glow and you see the tears begin dropping from his eyes as he touches the body of Vernon and lay on hands restores 5 HP. Uh, oh. So, just so you're aware, <laughs> you have three down teammates and you can split up lay on hands by one hit point, if you would like. That okay. was a beautiful gesture. You have three down teammates at the moment. <laughs> I'll give him one HP and then I'll be like, wow, man, that was fucking me. I'll just go around and, and push everybody else. I was going to say, <laughs> you're just like the soft, like intense. You you have a tear of light falls from your eye and a, a ripple of light like over a pond covers Vernon. And then you walk over and just touch Ryudo and he just <gasps> gasps as he is no longer dying. Uh, and then you head up to, if you would, I mean, if you'd like to, you head up to Reginald. Yeah, um, oh yeah, and do the same thing. Yeah, you see me kind of like get out, like, like slowly but like hastily get out like my healer's kit and start like almost like sewing Reggie up and you know, you know whatever wounds he has to like stabilize him. If so. you guys are curious what happened to my character when that rat hit me, you ever see what happens when somebody gets like hit by their legs? Fucking the rat swiped my legs and I straight up like. Like did like a flip face potion to the ground, basically just like. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Uh, you definitely have uh have a concussion. Yeah, I'm not I'm not feeling too good. I'm like I'm like, now I'm like laying on my back, you know, still spitting up blood a little bit, like. Ugh. Yeah, oh, there's, there's now just a uh, deanimated rat in the middle of the room. Um, all of you are now conscious as uh, Marcus has distributed some of his his good good healing light i don't know if marcus even knows what he's done yet no not really i've just sort of realized that i can touch things and they feel better so i'm kind of just <laughs> touching I can a little touch bit of every... things i'm just, just gotta try and touch everyone you can yeah Rito's definitely right. coughing trying to gather himself as he gets back up fuck that thing was big Fucking rat. Yeah. <clears throat> After I see Reggie kind of pop back up and you know 
start breathing. I'm going to go over to the rat and start harvesting it. All right. Ryuto's going to go over to Marcus and kind of put his hand on his shoulder and say, thank you. What should I... What should I roll here? So, the yeah, the so you, there. Are, if you guys want to do a harvest, there are two um, checks that need to happen. Give me one second as I pull it all up. This would be a good chunk of time to cut out because it might take me a second to get these rules going. Mm-hmm. Can you harvest if it's, like, not a real creature? You can harvest damn near anything. Nice. We can do this role playing if we want in the meantime. Yeah, yeah, do some role playing while I get the rules. I definitely, yeah. as my character definitely start to get up here, probably walk over to Marcus and be like, "Perhaps I've misjudged you, uh, smelly man. I appreciate what you've done for me." Uh, you guys are, you guys are welcome. I just didn't, I, I didn't want you guys to be hurt. And uh, when that tail came swiping out, I just. I saw everybody begin to fall before me, and I, for a moment, I really wasn't scared anymore, if that makes sense. And I, I guess I don't really know what happened, but, and I sort of like show you my hands, which they look normal now, and uh, I, I don't really know if I can do it again now, but I'm gonna keep an eye on this. That's good. That's good. And I, I point over to you, I'm like, it looks like he did piss his pants. So it's good that you are no longer afraid. Yeah, okay. it's definitely oh. this. I am yeah. also going to walk over towards the nest and try to investigate it, I think. Oh, that's definitely worth it. Put oh, red, I, like, look. expand my ball again, close it, and you see Reggie just, like, disappear. Right. Kind of. Um, just so you know, I was reading it there, uh, mm-hmm. views. If you recall him into his, uh capsule or his vessel he is Mm -hmm. instantly stabilized yeah so you don't need like in the future you don't need to do a medicine check you just recall him instant stabilize feels better for me to with with my healers i don't need to make the medicine check oh great okay yeah rito's gonna walk over to bert for a second and say (sighs) damn it I should have fucking taken the help. Ryan, we're a team, man. We gotta help each other out when we can, you know? You see Ray to like spit on the ground and he's like... We're definitely starting to work like one. And it would help more if I didn't resist it so damn much. Session one. Comes in waves. Yeah. Proud of you. Okay. That's you know, kind of how it goes. So. Ryuta will eventually move back over to the nest to help out with that check once Vernon. Yes. The way this harvest check works. Mm-hmm. Um, two people can make the two main checks. Okay. Um. There is going to be one. Uh. Is, they're both going to be survival checks. One person okay. is doing the assessment, and one person is doing the physical harvest. Um, the assessment person, whoever you pick, does a survival, a wisdom survival check. Mm-hmm. The person who does the physical carving is going to do a dexterity survival check. Anyone? Uh, I'll do the assessing. Okay. Are you proficient in... Uh, Heart and survival? Yeah. yeah, so you that's definitely probably the best person. Nice. Yeah. Now, because as a medium creature, the way help actions do not work the same. Helpers yeah. are allowed, depending on the size of the creature, to boost the check. If you are proficient in um survival and you would like to help out, you can uh go and help because as a medium creature, a maximum of two people can assist, and you can lend your proficiency bonus to the final check. Mm-hmm. We're going to add all of these checks together to see what you get. Okay. Um, you so how would I roll up the dexterity uh, survival? Uh, just, I would have to, we'd have to probably just do, just like slash roll 1d20 plus 6. Yeah. 
Yeah. How, how do I, um, is, it, is, it, is it plus my proficiency? My your proficiency plus your dex modifier, so which is six. Plus, well, no, because I have a plus, uh, what's this, what's this special? What's no, 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 no. Plus four. Because, yeah, because that adds your wisdom and your proficiency bonus. I'm right. telling you to add your dexterity and your proficiency bonus instead of yeah, wisdom. Yeah, so dex, dex plus two, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so which is plus, plus six. Eight? I have no, 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 because we're taking away plus two. Because you have plus two wisdom. That's oh. what makes your survival plus four. Okay, yeah. And so we're taking away the wisdom and substituting in dex. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, right, a little optional rule that I think a lot of people don't know about, but it's a fun one. So one I love that rule. Yeah. Yep, but we're not going to do that yet, because there's a couple other things we have to determine before you make that check. Is there anyone who's going to be helping? The maximum of two. Is anyone else proficient in survival? I am not proficient in survival. Um, no, I'm not proficient either. <laughs> I feel like most blood hunters would be, but I know you're an intelligence one. Yeah, hobgoblins get a bonus to intelligence. So. If a helper has a proficiency in the skill associated with the monster's type, the helper adds proficiency bonus to the check. If the helper does not have proficiency, it uses half of his proficiency bonus rounded down instead. Okay. Okay, so I could help and give him plus one then. Yep, so two of you can help and give an additional plus one. Are you proficient, Marcus, in uh, survival? Um, I am not proficient oh. in survival, but... Uh, oh my gosh, guys, I am so sorry. What? I made a mistake. This is technically a construct, not a beast. It is actually going to be a intelligence investigation check and a dexterity investigation check. Oh. Let me get in for just a second. I can do the intelligence investigation check or dexterity investigation. I could do either one of those. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do the intelligence one there, sir. Yeah, all right. Fuse isn't definitely. You, I know you've got good. What's your intelligence, Ryudo? How smart are you? It's a 15. I think Fuse is a I little have, bit smarter. I have a 19. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not uh, proficient with uh, investigation. So probably should have Ryudo do that one. Okay, yeah. Okay. I'm yeah, s yeah I'm sorry guys, it's a it was just a construct instead. But you can still That's fair. Uh, is Marcus or Bert, are you guys proficient in investigation? Um, no. And then plus Yeah. You are proficient? Yeah. Okay, so you can lend two, Marcus can lend or Ver Vernon can lend one, so you guys will get a plus three at the end of the check. Um, but first, we have to decide Reggie? what you guys... What's up? What about Reggie? Uh, you can only... is a medium creature, you can only have two helpers. Uh, yep. Reggie is also a monkey who cannot... He's not trained to manipulate tools. Okay, so we're going to plug yeah. the two checks. Like, we can't really okay. hear you. You're kind of like breaking up. Yep. Vic, Vic, you're a yeah, little bit... So Plus three at the end, and then two next, yeah, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this is a construct, and I'll let you guys know the way that harvesting checks work is you pick components and the number of components. The higher rarity the component, the higher the DC. Now, depending on the number of components that you uh, want and the uh, rarity of said components, that DC can fluctuate vastly. Um, okay. For this construct, because you can get a file of blood, uh, which would be a DC five. Okay. You can get flesh, which is a DC ten. Bone, DC fifteen. Brain, DC twenty. Here, wait, wait, or wait. Or a. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Blood, flesh. All right. Bone. Basically, these all go up five. Five Brain. five. Yeah, yeah. And then and after that, brain. After brain is its life spark, which is like it's the thing that makes it go. And after that, it's its cock and balls. Oh, uh, the cock and balls, I think, probably fall under flesh. I would, probably, I would assume it is. They might fall under brain. It's a rat. <laughs> Depending on how rat. big it is, it might fall under bone, you know? Oh, yeah. He's not. Oh. Rigor mortis, you know, sets in. <laughs> 
All right. Um, so Ryuta is going to talk to Dr. Fuse here, and he's going to say, all right, so there's a few different things here that are pretty interesting. I've, I've personally got my eyes on the uh, the blood and the life spark. Yeah. If we now, can get those, I think that'd be good. With something this big, you can um, collect multiple of the blood, and the you can collect multiple blood, flesh, oh. and bone. Uh, only one brain is available, and only one life spark is available. Right. Um, well, then, what do you think there, Dr. Fuse? Do you want to go for any more? We can shoot for higher if we want. We can go for, like, getting flesh and bone or brain, and we can we can see what we get. I'm, I'm cool to try it. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, if, if you feel like the blood is important to get, then you can grab it, but... I mean, I just I got mean, a blood thing, personally. I, I think there might be more important blood out there for you to grab, but you know. Um, would you would you prefer the flesh, or bone, or brain? I I, I probably prefer the uh, the brain here. Okay. Here. So the brain the brain will okay. set it at DC twenty if you just want the brain. Mm -hmm. And this and is the checks are combined, right? Yep. So the yeah. checks are combined. So you've got plus three from your helpers, Ryudo. Mm -hmm. What would your dexterity intelligence be? Dexterity investigation. My dexterity investigation. Or, I'm because... sorry, dexterity investigation. Uh, sorry, plus five. So that's an eight. What do you got for your intelligence investigation there, uh, Doc? Uh, my intelligence investigation is plus six. Oh, I thought we were rolling for him. Well, no, I'm just trying to get what yeah. your full yeah. bonus is going to be. Right. So we've plus got. Six. I rolled a thirteen and for my roll. Okay. Oh, you already rolled it. Oh, you already rolled it. Well, see, okay, so that's not going to count. This roll okay. can't happen until we're 100% locked in on what your DC is going to be. Right. Okay. So, basically, you guys set your own DC for this, depending on what you want to harvest. Alrighty. Um, right, but you have a total of a plus 14, and then you get to roll each roll just a D20. Don't roll, don't add anything to it. Okay. Yeah. So, we're for just going to go for the brain and the life spark. Would Hold on, Tom. <laughs> Fuse, <laughs> nothing happening. It. Don't yeah, roll. You, stop rolling. I thought we already decided on what we were grabbing. What is no. it? Then? What are you doing? What is it? it? The brain. Are you, are you just going? You can get multiple things. It'll add to the DC. So if you do the brain and the blood, that's a DC 20 plus a DC 25. Or a DC right. 20 plus a DC 5, making a total of a DC 25. Yeah. All right, let's grab the brain and the blood then. Oh, wait. But okay. do you want to grab so more that you guys have a plus 14 to the roll? You yeah, can't. Right. You don't have to. You don't have to grab more, but you can. No, I think we should go big, boys. I think we should go big. Like, right. so I think going big would be getting a brain and a life spark. If we that's could go a forty-five. Two, that would be the hardest roll that we could get, but that would be going big. You know. Okay. Okay. Maybe think, like. I guess we can grab. I, I let's go with the brain and the blood. Brain and blood will be a DC twenty-five. DC 25 with plus 14 and two rolls. I feel like we could also maybe go for flesh or something, you know? Okay. Flesh will make it a 35. That's a lot. Yeah, but that's we can like do it. Average. Yeah. So that's a. Let's just knock that DC down. So DC's thir 35 for a blood. Hold on. Just making yep. sure I got this right. Blood, flesh, and brain. Brain's 20. Blood makes it 25. Flesh makes it 35. Yeah. So DC thirty five check minus, or well it's DC thirty five, DC thirty five. Both yeah. of you, that's it. We're locking in. Both locking of you roll in. a D twenty. Yeah. All right, guys. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Okay. You know. You know what? That's that happens. We still get something. Hey. I life, feel like. really bad because Tommy rolled decently on his other checks. <laughs> <laughs> I almost want to give <laughs> another roll. Let's get a partial. You can just <laughs> use the 16. Just use, yeah, we'll just use the 16. <laughs> that, that wouldn't have changed anything. We'll use the 16. Um, 16 plus 8 plus 14. Okay. Uh, 16 plus, sixty. yeah, 16 plus 14 is 30, plus 8 is 38. You made it. You all are able to collect the brain, a vial of blood, and a chunk of flesh. When they come and examine what's happening, they'll be like, I thought these creatures didn't bleed. Uh, you, when they are doing the extraction, they're literally like, t 
it they're mutilating this thing pretty bad but they're like wringing its body out to get just like a vial of blood took like its leg and like two of its legs ringed out yeah syringe like he's had to plug that syringe into multiple places just pulling out a couple of drops at a time and putting it in the vial um it's like there's very very little blood but it still is there um and and it's not pumping it's super coagulated yeah you can see that he's just piling up so much coagulated like skin and and rotted meat and shit just so that we can get to the not rotting it's not rotting i can like okay i guess so like after like the first couple i'll like put some like water in the syringe and then like pump it in there and then like re then like yeah yeah you're able to and then and then you sit there because this this whole check takes an hour in order to perform Mm -hmm. i believe um so you're like taking it out you got this thinned out blood you've got a little uh little pot of boiling water or, or a little pot you're putting it in to cook you know boil the water back out of it so you have as close to the pure blood as you can get um you collect just a hunk of its flesh that you carve carefully away from the bone on one of its hindquarters um and uh dr fuse giving instructions to ryudo who is able to you know open up the skull without damaging the brain and removing it um you guys just are carrying these things now. Just in your hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as it's happening, Ryudo's like pretty excited talking to Dr. Fuse about this. And you, you know, it's like, you know, Dr. Fuse, I know you've been working with the organization for a long time. I'm just excited to finally get a get a really get out there, get our hands on some good stuff that we can bring back, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just kind of you know, they might be able to make more stuff like this eventually. And you know, it's pretty fascinating actually i've seen a lot of work being done and uh yeah i don't mind the dirty work getting through some sinew and disgusting coagulated blood and flesh and a little bit of matted up fur that has definitely some piled up shit on the side of it a little bit with with a little bit of the you know just general dirt and dust from all of that stuff it's it's so natural (laughs) it's very primal yeah (laughs) yeah so yeah that's it Okay, so with that, you guys uh, emerge. Um, I don't really have like a home screen to put you guys on. I, I, me and, me and uh, Ryudo, we're going to investigate the nest as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, go ahead and uh, roll. One of you roll. Yeah. Uh, actually, so you're going to do this after the uh, after the check is done? Uh, yeah, that's fine, I suppose. Yeah. Well, yeah, you'd okay. be the only one who, if everyone is occupied for a full hour except for you, uh, Vernon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, while that, they're you know. doing this, right, so I feel like. Investigation. Yeah, just roll investigation. You got it. Yeah, I was gonna say I feel like you would do that by yourself. Uh, it is a nest. Um, it, again, it's this weird. With even with a fifteen, you start to notice that it's this weird, like repeated pattern of like woven and and you know purposely placed messy. Uh hay and like debris everywhere um you don't find anything of value unfortunately can i like take some of the fibers yeah if you'd want if you'd like to yeah i'll go ahead and do that okay cool. um all right uh, are you guys all done in here I think yeah so. I'm all good. and we will move on i'm just gonna leave it on this screen for now um as Uh, Our encounters are done, but there is definitely still uh, things to be done, checks that can be made, uh, things you can do in the organization. Uh, You guys make your way, kind of crawl back through the rubble um, and get to the cellar door. You knock on it, or you try to open it, and it is locked. Um, And then after kind of hearing the rumble... um, the door is pulled open. You're all almost blinded by the LED office light, or the you know the fl- fluorescent office lights that light the room that this uh, cellar door was in. Okay. And Tyson and Jean Claude are standing there over you, going, "Hey, congrats! You beat the rats in the basement test." Yeah, yeah. It was a uh, the last that last rat was um tough. Oh but yeah, he's just from it. He's a son of a bitch. Oh, you guys, damn extra credit. 
you know, I didn't really like you guys. Jean Claude was telling me that you were gonna, you were good eggs, and then you just hear Jean Claude go, "We." Oui. Um. But uh, wow, I can't believe you. What would you guys manage to collect? We got, we got a brain. We got some blood. Uh, it was kind of tough to get out, but after putting some water through its system, yeah. it kind of, I mean, uh, those kind rats of loosened been, up a bit. Um, those rats have been killed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. I can't believe you guys managed to get anything out of them. I mean, I, you, sh- yeah, I, no, there was, uh, Jean Claude. Are there any rules against them taking things out of there? And Jean Claude like looks down and says, "As far as I know, they are free to take. I mean." I have not seen anyone see any value in those nasty fucks down there, but if you well, all see you value, you are free to take in it. In a fresh body now. Yes, we, there will, I mean, this is not my department, but uh, it is, uh, hopefully they put a new one down there. It seems like it was the same one, did it, you know, get hit by you guys a bunch of times and go into the middle and do the big tail sweep move? Yeah, yeah. Uh, classic yeah. giant rat move, huh? <laughs> I'm going to yeah. kind of laugh and start. I've heard <laughs> stories about it. People uh, come out very, as I look, very battered, bruised, yeah. like battered and bloodied. Yeah, um, nobody had to come in and save all of you, though. We were monitoring your vitals and everything, and you seem you all made it. Nobody died. That's good. It hurt, it hurt Reggie, so I need to come back up and give him a, give him a taste. Well, you, you see, know? good things that you are a doctor then, no? Yeah, yeah. It hurt a lot of us. So, um, well, it's a good... And then Tyson speaks back. Well, it's a good thing you guys have a nice place to rest. Uh, why don't you guys all go take those nasty things back to your room? Um, you've been upgraded. Can give it to someone hey, first? congrats. You guys are now apprentices. Uh, you're apprentice-level uh, operatives in the organization. A round of applause for all of you. Uh, yeah. That's impressive. I didn't think a single one of you would pass the test. Maybe you, Fuse, but none of the rest of you, no. Uh, yeah, they, now that you've been upgraded, you guys have cots instead of just, you know, rags on the floor. You also have a uh, cooler of holding uh, where you can keep those things. Nice, man. Anything you collect from any of your jobs, you can just put into that cooler, um, and it'll keep them fresh for as long as you need to. Cool. Well, uh, cool. we'll be grabbing lots of stuff. Thank you. Um. And I yeah. kind of limp, limp back to the room. Yeah, I'm basically like, uh, my fucking one of my legs is like we, dislocated. I'm like dragging it behind. Oh, well, we could take you all to the infirmary if you'd rather do that than just sleep it off. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, probably yeah, a good no, idea. You know, that's a, yeah. Um, yeah. and uh, Tyson uh kind of goes and he's like, well, I've got your report right here. Uh, I'm gonna take it up. Um, I'm sorry, Paul. Do you have the name of the woman who talked to you guys? I see. I did write it down, I'm pretty sure. At least I tried to. If I got it, I would have, I feel. I don't know if she gave you her name. I was about to say, I don't know for sure if I got her name. We'll see, though. We'll uh, see. Is is the guy that I met uh, like the leader of the infirmary, or is The guy a... that you met? No, he doesn't work in the infirmary. He works in the I, uh, I go the... to him. You do not either. have access to the loot tavern yet. No. Um, oh, so... me? I, I think I know oh, someone. Yeah, you would. You would. Uh, no one else does. Well, um, it's more of the person that I know. I would yeah, you can. You, can the you have to shoot him a text for him to let you in because you don't have access yet. Um, yeah, but he'll I, let I, you I, in. I, 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 I paid him. Yeah, you yeah, paid him. Hit him up on the beeper. Right, of course, because texting doesn't work. Uh, yeah, what, you paid. I love you. Isn't it like three, four, nine or something? What is that? I don't know. Three, but four, you, six. You page uh, your friend, uh, who we're not going to reveal yet, and you, uh, Doctor Fuse, head off away from the party. The rest of you all are led to the infirmary. Um, it is a. Uh, it is in the adventurer side of the organization, so. The beds are, while they are like hospital beds and they have, you know, medical hookups next to them, IV bags if people need them, um, you are all laid down. uh, And these uh, people, nurses, men and women in these crisp, uh, you know, scrubs come in all wearing masks uh, and 
they you know glove up and they go basically go to town kind of like it feels brutal like vermin you're Ver, vernon you're uh i know i'm so sorry you're let you know your hip is dislocated this guy walks up and he just slams it back into place and it hurts so bad but then immediately feels like it never it's like it like nothing ever happened like it's a shock of pain and then nothing it's like I bite um, like, ah, oh and then they're doing you know other things where like if you have a bruise they're like squeezing it where it hurts really bad and then all of a sudden the bruise is gone um broken bones they're fusing back together just by pushing the physical bones together uh these are definitely magical healers um, that are taking care of all of you. Uh, you are all back up to full hit points after a little while. Uh, Fuse, you are able to go and deposit all the pieces into your cooler. Um, you go meet with your friend who does a very similar work for you, uh, more so to help. You know, he knows you can kind of take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. He is more helping Reggie, as he's the one who. We we know that we're not going to yeah. reveal anymore. Yep. Um, and, uh, you are all in a, you know, a couple of hours, you're able to gather back into your room. It is much nicer. The walls are no longer these, you know, stark white office walls. They are wood paneled. Um, you have a hang, you know, have sconces with, um, magical lanterns lighting your room. Uh, there are six beds. Uh, all size for each of you with a uh, trunk in front of them. Um, and there's also a large uh, cooler in the room that is, it's like one of those big meat coolers. It's just a big white thing with a, just a lid that opens up that's secured to the ground. Um, you also see uh, to the left, there is uh, a label that says crafting station. Um, within the crafting station, uh, you, as any of you approach it, you can see different things that you would need for different things you want to create. You feel, you know, the cooler does not say Yeti on the side. Uh, hasn't been invented. Too. Hasn't been invented. It, actually, uh, it says Supreme on the side. <laughs> no, the cooler says uh, Abominable Snowman on the side. Yetis don't exist yet. <laughs> um. But you see this crafting station, you feel that, do you, any of you feel that whatever crafting tools you need, if you want them to be there, they, you'll be able to find them. It's a strange feeling where, like, you know no matter what you were trying to craft, you could find it in the crafting station. Even if that would be bigger than what you might think. You feel like you could even smith in there. Um, and... Uh, you are all uh, reconvened, healed up. I'll say you guys have taken a short rest, so anything that you recover on a short rest, you can go ahead and recover it. Um, and the room is yours. Uh, XP, sir? Yes, of course. After completing this, all of you have gained 120 XP each. <laughs> damn. We killed some rats, guys. You guys killed a bunch of rats in a basement. The initiation for any good adventurer. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a classic. But we did not level up yet? Nope, you need 300 XP to level up. We're going to be right. playing XP to 3. Yeah. Um, and then depending on where we are, on whether Heliana's has like actually come out and I have it, um, we may XP to 4. Uh, I doubt we would go past 4 because after it's like... <laughs> 300 to 1, and then a total of 600 to 2, so another 300. Um, and then 900 to 3, well, no, it's an additional 300. Or 600, sorry, so. 300 to 1, 600 to 2, 900 to 3, and that's like 2,700 to 4. Wow. So, if we have to go to 4 in order to wait for the me to get like the actual stuff, we will. Um, at that point, hopefully gas prices have gone down a little bit, and we can reconvene in person. Mm -hmm. um and where i will have a lot of cool shit cool. um but for now we're going to be doing roll 20s that i kind of create here um and Pretty i do cool. have i have a lot of the rules like crafting stuff and harvesting cook even rules for cooking um i do have so we're able to use 
Uh, I am also going to be relying on you guys to keep track of your inventory, things that you harvest, as well as, um, you know, any gear or anything you're given uh, from the organization. Um, speaking of that, were we given health potions? What was the official ruling? No, not yet. Okay. You have not been given health potions at this time. That test was to test your own internal abilities. Uh, you were given equipment, but nothing further than that. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, our bard was no help at all. <laughs> uh, there were a couple of bardic inspiration rolls that helped, I think. He also killed a rat. That's fair. That's fair. Well, no, it was... Well, oh, he killed a rat, yes, but he, he didn't kill the big rat, like Marcus. Well, he also did vicious mockery on the rat. That's true. That's true. You motherfucking rat? Um, so yeah, so the room is yours. You guys can chat, discuss what just happened, whatever you want.